Theory and Mola. What's the situation? And Ryan. And Ryan. And Ryan. There he is. Can't forget that one. No. Nope. Welcome back to Stargrift, everyone. Hope you're having a great day. You probably Hello. saw the title. And we were uh, we were we were reading a lot of the comments. People were saying, "Oh, it's clickbait. It's just, they're just going to change the name." Um, the show is actually ending. <laughs> it's like the one time in the history of YouTubers not clickbait. It's like, not clickbait. Yeah. It was it was actually real clickbait because it's like it's real. It's happening. Yeah. But you also wanted to click because you saw that. Yeah, so it was appropriately um, done. Yeah. So, Mahler, go ahead. Yes, there is. We have. I have bad news. It's pretty sure how I said it when I had a chat with these lads the, uh, off of like off stream. The, the 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 a problem has arisen. You know, it all starts with the the idea of like, hey, yeah, next week we'll do a big old discussion on Anakin. That'll be great. Talking about his uh, you know, his arc, his rise and fall and stuff. And I, I thought to myself, all right, so I need to watch the prequels again, obviously, and then I need to just look into sort of breakdowns of his, his arc, maybe see some arguments in favor and against, because I've always had these discussions over the years. I'm sure you guys have as well. And I was like, okay. And then just line out as best I can in notes, just, just uh, how I break down what I see as the problems versus not. And then I was like, fuck, that's going to take probably about 20 hours of time in total to do all of that. And this is the thing. Some people might be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'd be like, no, that's how I usually do a lot of that's there's a reason why I'm like so detailed. That's usually why you know, I try to find all the details so I can explain all this. So I was like, okay, where do I fit that in? And I was looking at my schedule. And I was like, fuck me. I've got to do, I need to watch uh, me and me and drinker every month do a star Trek movie. Uh, Cause I haven't seen any of them. So I was like, I still got to see that that's coming up soon. And then I got to do a breakdown. Hey, which one are you watching? I did five uh, the other day. Yeah. Nice. This pretty is pretty bad. <laughs> like, <it's, laughs> they're they're fucking old. They're old. Yeah. But for anybody who's like, oh my fucking, of course he hated. It. It's like, no, that was actually the only one that I thought was bad so far. I liked. Uh, I like. I even like one. By the way, um, one, two, one, three, really? and four yeah. are awesome. Yeah. I like one, two, three, and four, and I'm looking forward to six. But yeah, four. Uh, sorry, five. I was like, I gotta get the notes done for that because you know it's it's what I, I expect Drinker wants me to do. Like when, when we started up, the video is already up. He, he was like, you know, I can't wait to unleash you on this movie. And I was like, yeah, okay. So going through it, I was like, so I gotta do that. And I hadn't, I still haven't finished uh, sorting out my stuff for um, the the latest EFAP movies. I'm supposed to be editing. It was funny. The Lord of the Rings stuff got sorted, but I was talking about it with Theory before we started up Stargrift, uh, like getting that yeah. fixed, and all of that is what I call like emergency editing. None of it's supposed to be stuff that I'm doing. It's all supposed to have been done by now. Before the end of last year, that was the plan. And it's bled over so hard now that we're in the third month of this year and I still haven't done anything for my plans for this year. Uh, so you got all of that and then just all of the running of things in general and then uh, staying up to date for Real BBC Open Bar. I missed the catch up for Open Bar, which I don't usually do, but I just didn't have any time. I told Drink of the Ice, can't do it. Um, and so I'm, I'm basically, I'm sorry, but I've come to realize I bit off way more than I can chew. I can't, uh, I can't run this show as well. I, well, not run, but be a part of this show as well. I simply do not have the time. I, I hate to inform the audience of this. I did not see the two newest episodes of Bad Batch. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry too, because I wanted to hear you talk about it. Yeah. Um, so I am I'll, sorry. I'll try to watch them so that I can tell you next week what I thought. <laughs> like. Because I know, I know, Ryan, you're very invested in my opinion of Bad Batch. So. I am, especially because this episode specifically dealt with like the return of characters that you are not attached to at all. Uh -huh. So, like, I was kind of interested how you felt uh, like some of that was done. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, yeah, just um, so explaining all of that, I haven't even talked about doing my mainline stuff, right? I, I've got three different main channel videos in production, but not any of the three of them are close to being released. And the, the different people I'm trying to work with them on. And, you know, uh, what's what's really bugged me is in the past, like, month and a half, two months, I haven't touched one of the ones that I've been trying to chip away at to make sure it progresses. And it's just, uh, I haven't had any time for it. So, yes, there is a limit to how long I can be. And I've, uh, I've apparently found it. And so um, what I wanted to do, I just want to give these guys as he big a heads up as I possibly could. I was uh, I'm sorry. Like, I, I shouldn't have agreed to do this in the first place. I didn't want to disappoint anybody. And I figure it's better to say this now than 
when it builds up further and further. Because I don't know about you guys, but I've had a lot of positive feedback about this collection of us three that people people are very much invested, and I imagine yeah. that I wouldn't want to cut it off. You know, in a like if I was to let this go further and further, and then stop being able to turn up to them or unable to get things prepped in time, and then you know I start damaging the actual quality of the show. Like I, I would prefer to instead say I don't think I can pull this off. I hear yeah. you. Yeah. Fair enough. It, it, and we talked about it too. Like, um, for me, I've got a lot more shit going on as well, especially with some of the stuff we're doing at Geeks and Gamers. I'm sure if you guys watch there, you pay enough attention to see what's going on. I, I cannot, I can't confirm nor deny. I may or may not be, be returning to several streams that people have been asking for for fucking ever um, that I'm probably going to hate my life doing. But there is just, just some other stuff going on. We've kind of figured with, with Mahler having to step out, it's probably a good time for me to, before we just keep this thing going and build it bigger and bigger and then actually have to rip a Band-Aid off. So it has been fun. It has. Yeah, great. And this is not the last time you're going to see us all on a stream. No. Um, no. Not no. only are we going to do Star Griff next week, um, and we're going to have a cool like uh, look back at the prequels and a great discussion, and of course, Mahler tearing apart Bad Batch because he didn't watch it last time. <laughs> um but, He's not gonna watch, dude. Uh, but but I watch. will just for you guys. But I think <laughs> we're gonna like have three some, episodes. I think we're gonna have some surprise, like random star griffs to talk about big stuff and make them a little more special. Um, because we all three like r really like each other and like streaming with each other. It's just kind of thing. It's like, man, each and every week, three hours, it's a chunk out of all of our days. Yeah, we can keep the name, and whenever a season of something ends, I feel like we can just team back up for a stream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but and go for like several hours or as long as we need. So you know, we're we're gonna do it at the end of Acolyte. We'll 100%. do it at the end of Andor. Um, and Skeleton Crew, obviously. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Obviously, I mean, Tales of the Jedi. I don't know. That's up to you, boys. But uh, that'd be a, that'd be a fun one. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, Maybe. Andor season two, Ahsoka. You know, is yeah. We'll just do like one episode after every season. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Mm -hmm. And of course, whenever, you know, eventually a Star Wars movie will hit theaters, we assume at some I mean, point in the future. We have to do one for the Ray movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. You know, so the show is not fully dead, but it's, you know, weekly, it's it's dead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's dead, Jim. Um, <laughs> I'm back to looking at, uh, you know, getting some people on and doing uh, continuing a Monday thing here, but uh, it's really hard to find. The right people, I feel like, uh, for the the sort of mix that I want, the dynamic I want, I feel like I found that with these boys. So it's it's unfortunate, but they have all other things that they have to do. Like, I mean, Mahler hasn't made a video in months, so I get it. Um, and I haven't made a video since yesterday. I mean, there you <laughs> for go. For me, that basically is a month. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, Three I mean, day, it, it is what it is. We gotta move on and wish the boys the best. And uh, they'll be back. They'll be back for more. So yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So, and it it sucks because it? we know you guys really like it. Um, yeah. Like we see the comments in chat. Despite whenever I might take a big old dump on fucking Dave Filoni's dumbass, <laughs> and then you know, <laughs> glad you guys turn up to hate me. Overall, I think people do do like the back and forth. So, Drinker and Nerdrotic are the replacements. I yeah, dude, I'd I'd love for go. them to come in, but uh. I don't know. Yeah, I'd love to reach out to them. Get a rotation going, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we could see what happens there. I don't know. What am I going to watch at school now? I don't know, man. I'll go live and I'll do some behind-the-scenes stuff. As usual, hang out with you guys on Mondays, but uh, you know, it's going to take time to find uh, a new crew. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Some someone said, uh, "Nah, we don't enjoy the back and forth. Nah, <laughs> fuck you, fuck you, you suck." Dave Filoni is the second comment of George Luke. Yeah, I see you guys will really miss me. It's good to see. I like we have <laughs> all of the possible responses. It mm. shows that we don't have an echo chamber. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. What happened to Darth Melvin? I don't know where is he. <laughs> Hold on. Get that that other one said, "What am I going to do to not off myself on Mondays?" Is that what that said? Is that what he said? That there was, the one you had up before, that's like, now what am I going to do to not off myself on Monday? I don't know, man. I'm partially blind now, so I can't really fucking see anything. Uh, Ryan, shit, I didn't know you were leaving out as well. What, did you know the Mauler was leaving? 
Yeah, I figured they didn't. <laughs> they just like Should that was a given for that. Like. <laughs> uh, you could do fan debates. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to find some new people. Um, it really depends on the dynamic. So it's not about subscriber count or anything like that. So it just depends on, you know, how we buy. We'll figure it out. You don't like Solo Command, Jake the Movie Geek? I have six chapters left in X-Wing Solo Command. Definitely my least favorite of the series. There's just way more goofy humor, which is odd because the previous two books were fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, once, once you get into Wraith Squadron, there's a lot more. It's a different group of people. Wraith Squadron is a bunch of fucking misfits and outcasts. There's a lot more comedy in it. But yeah, I like Solo Command. Any chance Josh will come back and miss it? No, Josh will not be coming back. So let's... Put that out there because I see a lot of questions and uh, comments about that. No, he will not be coming back. That show is done. And uh, we're going to be moving on to find new people. Miss his energy. Mm. Wow. Why am I so gutted after this pod just starting that <laughs> that's ending with Ryan and Mahler, the best boys? Yeah, you know, I, I love it too, but the boys, uh, they got a lot to do. I guess Mahler is... I was got like 10 different like, podcasts um, he's on. That was the thing. I missed a, a real BBC recently as well because I was uh, fucking one of the Lord of the Rings videos went down from copyright. And I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Because like, uh, I don't have anyone that can like take care of that to explain how to deal with copyright with the kind of the the limits we go to on, on you have, right? We'll have like seven hour videos filled with long clips. You have to do really specific stuff. So it's like having to teach someone over months to be able to get used to it and then they you know even if i was to do that they i need them editing rather than doing copyright shit and then it just it just layers over into everything and i do wish i could clone myself but we haven't cracked that yet but uh, you might get a record though you never know <laughs> well if i do get a record i'll just put him onto editing <laughs> like, as long as he knows <laughs> how to do that what if you got an omega oh well then she'd be perfect I just do everything female mola Nail the editing and podcast, and edit and podcast at the same time, and protected yeah. from any claims of misogyny. Ah, well, yeah, you never know about that one. Never about that one. Um, so there's some drama in chat again. It's so why are you guys making stuff up? It's nothing personal. Everyone just keeps asking sometimes about uh, Josh returning. That show ended. The guy went on to do his own thing, and we sent him a happy farewell. So w there's nothing that needs to go back and forth on that. So just like, you know, it's if Mahler decides to leave because he's got other engagements, you know, that's his choice. And he knows his schedule better than anyone else and what, what's best for him. So that's, that's we got to respect. Yeah, you know, I can't control people and be like, no, you're going to stay on the show forever. <laughs> it's like, well, no, that's not how it works. So we got to wish them the best and do what they want to do. So, yeah, no, there's no bad blood anywhere, man. It's just uh, people want to do their own thing. And it's cool. They come into your life for a bit. You guys do a cool thing together and then continue on there's no beef there's no, no nothing so everyone wants to turn it into a dramatic thing don't know why people like to do that i guess people like drama but people do um, like drama. oh they do yeah <laughs> yeah even if you have no idea who's involved like drama is like interesting but yeah we're gonna do it again so. yeah we're gonna be back okay bro like whatever <laughs> that's fabu brick <laughs> i don't care fabu <laughs> brick yeah Man, we're going to make a bunch of people kill themselves in the chat. They're really upset about this. I know. I see it. I know. I see it. Battlefront Collection bonked the Rise of Empire campaign. No end cutscenes for no reason. I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. Very nice. <laughs> Who's your husband? <laughs> Theory, are those Sennheiser HD 800s? I believe so. Yeah, I bought these uh, about six years ago. You bought those six years ago and they still work? It's going six oh, years. they're amazing, dude. These were, these were yeah, very high end. That's crazy. Five years ago. Yeah. I have uh, five dollar earbuds. I go through about a pair a week. So pair a week, fifty two times five, it's like yeah, like three hundred bucks a year. Yeah. We've been doing it for several years. Yeah. Get get one good one. I don't like the over the top headphones. They make my ears hot. See, these are great because they have good ventilation. Hmm. That makes me interested. But yeah, I I've always preferred uh earphones or ear ear plugs, but... I guess. Buds, that's it. Yeah, you know, it, it just makes my, uh, I don't know, sometimes you just feel like it's too deep in. 
Yeah. I, you know, I, I can't really understand that feeling, you know. Um, I've known people who felt that way, but I just. Uh, yeah. And then you get the earwax. People like, have eh. said that. It feels like it's too deep, you know, shit like that. But I've never experienced that feeling mm. personally. Yeah. Brian likes it deep in the ear. Yeah. Deep and wide. I'm guessing villains have a tougher time winning in hero assaults because Annie doesn't know how to properly use force lightning. AI doesn't know. Is Force Lightning like OP in the Hero Battles? Because I was thought that, like, I can't remember what was OP in that. To be honest with you, I've not seen the Crow. Not Everyone's crow. been talking. I, I'm not like super attached to the Crow. A lot of people hold it in this like super high regard. It's like, yeah, I saw yeah it Gary work. loves it. Yeah, like there's some people that fucking love that movie. So they're like really concerned with the remake. I don't, not very invested. Well, <laughs> so you're, you're, yeah, out of the well, uh, it'll be interesting to see it as a comparison. But I think when it comes out, people are going to be pretty mad. It sounds like another sort of IP getting potentially peed on. Battlefront needs to fix their online servers. Yeah, Aspire fucked up on this. I mean, like they, they charge too much money for for something that's like they also the apparently thing. don't want money. Why did they release it like this? Was uh, you must they must have known, right? You say that every time with these things, like they must have known. They must have known. Think about if think about if they maybe they didn't understand their man would be so big. Okay, let's throw them a bone. Uh, Why? And, and they hold on. I'm just I'm just giving you an example. <laughs> I'm saying, imagine they didn't think that the demand was going to be this big. That they were going to have like ten thousand players wanting to play multiplayer at launch, like shit like that. If they didn't think that, you know what they should have done? They should have seen all the excitement about it and everything, and be like, hey. We understand, we understand you guys really want this. We need more time because we were not prepared for this level of enthusiasm. So we're going to delay it a month. We're going to work on our servers, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like yeah. if they had said that, everybody would be like, oh, shoot, I wanted to play, but that's okay. They're doing the right thing. That's what everybody would have said. Yeah. I, I, I they absolutely launched said, it's like, fucking broken. Probably Disney, dude. They're probably like, release it now. But, sir, it's not ready. I said now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> when are they ever going to learn the lesson? Like, yeah, well, you do this though, it's permanent damage to the reputation and that initial, like, you know, blast of players. Most of them are not going to come back, or at least a lot of them. Yeah. If you fuck yeah. up your launch, it's it's really difficult to get the trust back. Yeah. You guys think um, of the Acolyte poster? <laughs> I think it looks like somebody's having their period and just decided to wipe it right by that lightsaber. I it's feel like there should be like you. a. Oh well, I feel like there should be a like a <laughs> Tampex pad or something underneath of it, because that's it really what to... this represents. What is it supposed to mean? Like the it's going to be a real violent show or something? I think it just means there's going to be a lot of women. Oh, they're all going to be synced up. <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> he got back in for a split second, Ryan, and yeah, yeah. booted him right well, out. He, again. he came in before I could give the punchline, so mm -hmm. uh, that's on him. But I think it's supposed to be just blood, and it's like, hey, this is dark and Edgy, but, gritty yeah. and violent. In an age of light, a darkness um, rises. Yeah. They don't just mean the skin tone of the main character. Wait, is Reaver in this? Um, well, the main character is... Uh, what's her name? Hold on. I know Trinity's in this, right? Amanda, Amanda Stenberg, who is... Uh, a non-binary, radical feminist, uh, person of color. Wait, who, in universe? That's just who is she's described as in like every single thing. Like she self-describes herself as a massive feminist. She's a black non-binary woman. Sweet. Yeah. Anything else about <laughs> like this poster? <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the poster is what it is. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Trailer's out tomorrow, yeah? Yes. Tomorrow, 8 a.m. Exciting. What I'm interested to see if it's going to be the same fucking trailer that got leaked from Star Wars Celebration a year ago. Mm -hmm. Or if it's an actual different trailer. Because that, that's that been out there for a while. You know what's um, weird is there, there aren't, isn't really any blood that leaks with lightsaber cuts. So, I think someone got hit in the face. Oh, like you hit like them with the... We've never seen that before. End. That's kind of cool. Yeah, like fucking punch them with a lightsaber handle. 
Nice. Do it. It, it, they started do it, They started actually utilizing that a lot, basically with the pommel, with the freaking boom, just like smacking people in the head to knock them unconscious. Yeah. Uh, in the EU, they did. They ended up using that a lot. Hmm. Non-lethal, and you know, don't have to replace their arms. Well, maybe we'll see that. Yeah. I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, the, the trailer's an interesting choice. Not for two dollars. <laughs> I'll say Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh. That's what you, that's what you get. Yeah, it's for real, man. TLD on Mola overbook for Starbreath. Pretty much. I um in retrospect, I probably shouldn't have started it up. But I mean it was fun. We did we, the episodes we managed to pull off. It's just that it's reaching critical levels on my end of not being able to uh, move things in place. Critical ass. Critical drinker. Kevin ate all his jelly beans. That's a Batwoman reference, actually. It's a yeah, deep really go. Theory, would Nick Gillard do the podcast? No, nah, man, he's busy. He'd do it sometimes, but he's busy. Mahler must advise. Dude, he doesn't even have social media. And every time, if I, like, text him, like, uh, you know, like a current millennial with, like, you know, the five responses per per line he gets triggered and calls me he's like he's like mate i i hate it when you do this <laughs> like oh, dude i'm sorry like <laughs> i didn't uh that's just how i text he's like he's like just just do it in one whole thing i'm like all right sure he like messages back he's like <laughs> is he one of the people that signs his name in text messages that's no what old people do sometimes. <laughs> no. no 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 he's he's pretty hip but like every time i do that he'll just call me and be like be like you reached the limit of the number of <laughs> pings i can take so i'm just gonna call you i'd rather just talk on the phone i'm like yeah okay y'all thoughts on the acolyte poster well what was the one a bit back about it was something to do with me and clone wars i think yeah don't bother watching Rebels after the Clone Wars. Ezra on his second day of Jedi training fights pre A New Hope, Darth Vader, and lives. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, there's like, uh, they, you'd have to watch it to get the full context. Why is Vader fighting? Isn't Ezra like a kid? Well, I guess he's killed <laughs> younglings before. That's fair. <laughs> he, he is, but. Um, <sighs> But he's got a lightsaber at the time, so got to get him. Fair game. Also, the first lightsaber, <laughs> the first lightsaber Ezra makes also is a blaster. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it's a, a staple. It looks like a staple gun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a staple gun, and he it's a lightsaber, <laughs> and he can also shoot with it. Okay. Kind of cool concept. I guess that's not like it doesn't break anything. It's just weird. Good for him. So uncivilized. <clears throat> Two non-Star Wars recordings for you all. Red Rising books and Game of Thrones, The Expanse. Excellent storytelling in Arcane, which I watched based on a critical drinker recommendation. It's excellent. Long live the grift. <laughs> long lived. <laughs> long, long live the grift. <laughs> Was, wasn't that long lived? Um, you really liked Arcane, right, Mahler? Oh, Arcane is fucking excellent. That was one of my favorite newer things that have come out, TV shows. Fully recommend. New season out the end of this year, I think. Um, over 3,000 people in the chat. What's up? How you doing? It's not clickbait for those of you just walking in. The boys uh, are busy, primarily uh, Mahler with his show, and Ryan's got some new stuff coming up. Uh, but if you all could hit like, we appreciate it. We'll still do one last show next week, and then we'll be reconvening after every season. After like most seasons. Or shows. movies. Yeah, or movies. Uh, and uh, you if know, they ever build up the courage to release another movie, jeez, <laughs> okay. Mando and Grogu is definitely gonna get the. <laughs> that's definitely gonna get released for sure. What if it's a straight to Disney Plus movie? Oh jeez! No, 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 no! Could they you are... imagine? Well, we need the Star Wars movies again. There was this real hype around that. Uh, I'm interested to see what the budget of Mandalorian and Grogu is going to be. Three hundred fifty million. I don't think so. I think that they are going to make it similar to the production of like the the seasons. So I think they're probably get. I think it's which those were like eighty to a hundred million when they started. I think this movie is going to be like a hundred to hundred fifty. I think they're looking for like a cheap win. 
That's what I think. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Now they they might spend a lot on the fucking Ray one or something, but I think this mm. one because of the way people are used to seeing the characters and the way they're used to shooting and everything, I think it's gonna be. I mean, saying 150 million is on a budget is seems crazy, but it kind of would be. For yeah, no, I get what you're saying because they might have been like, "You guys know how to make this. Can you make a feature film? Can you make it for less than we would have to do for a bigger film? And can you make it fucking popular?" And they'd be like, "I think we can. Yeah, yeah, I think we do that." Yeah. And I think they're in the middle of actively reworking what they had planned for season four into this movie. That's what I think. Drunk nerd theory, drunk 3PO nerd erotic in theory. That would be drunk nerd theory. Mm. Gary's got less time than uh, you guys, doesn't he? Oh, I don't know. These days, everyone's competing to have less time. Everyone's doing everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Gary yeah. was on Piers Morgan the other day. Wow, why am I he so was, gutted yeah. after this pod just starting that it's ending? Which Ryan Mall are the best? Thank, Thank you. you, Matthew Hart. Tech is too obvious. The Shadow Clone is reconditioned Cody. Discuss. I do wonder who it is. Um, I don't know. I think it's Cody. That'd be kind of cool. I guess, this yeah. This sucks ass. Wait. Oh, ass. sucks as much as Ryan did in the... All right. In the Navy. Thank you. Nice, dude. <laughs> if Jabba killed Han and Leia at his first, at his palace before Luke got there in Return of the Jedi, do you think Luke would have slaughtered Jabba and his men like Anakin did to the Tuscans? Probably. I would actually say it's pretty likely he may have done that, yeah. That's actually a cool video idea. I'd love to do that. They're animals. And, and he slaughtered, slaughtered, them, slaughtered like animals. them like animals. Except, you know, them. Ryan Not would run in men. and take Salacious B. Crumb to himself. Yeah, no, 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 wait, wait, Luke, not this one. Not this one. Yeah, not this one. He didn't do anything wrong. Look at him. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> not just the Jabba, but the women Jabba and the children Jabba. That's right. Battlefront collection bonked. Oh, I read this one. Thank you, gay actor Michael Douglas. Theory are those? Yep. Ryan, what are your thoughts on the newer Thrawn trilogies? If you read them, I really enjoy them, and they got me into... I will say about these, though, you don't really need them. I got these specifically because of Vader Episode 2 and 3, so that I could hear or not hear every specific detail uh, and not miss a beat. Hmm. Otherwise, it's overkill. They're very comfy. Ryan, what are your thoughts on the newer Thrawn trilogies? If you read them, I really enjoy them, and they got me into the OG Thrawn trilogy. So I, I haven't read all the books that Zahn's published in the new canon. I read the first one, and I may have done Ascendancy as well. Yeah, I, I don't remember. But um, overall, I thought it was he was making an effort to try to show you, hey, it's, he's a, a similar character. He's going through a similar path. He's taken a lot to recreate from what had happened before and trying to insert it and make it fit in the new canon. Um, I thought the books were finely written. It just... Um, it's just trying to rewrite a lot of what we already knew about the character. But Timothy Zahn's a, a good writer. He loves Throne. But I prefer uh, pre prefer before Disney. Before the 30 pieces of silver. I'm guessing villains have a tougher time winning in Hero Assault because... Hey, all right, read this one. Pro... Right, that's with the uh, new uh, with with Skarsgård, right? Uh, who played Pennywise? In yeah, yeah, the Crow film. Um, and does this mean Kingdom of Heaven Eve have coming out? That'll be Wednesday. Yes, the one I've been working on is King Arthur. That's still not fully edited yet. And uh, me and Gogur are working together to get the arc completed. But there shouldn't be any interruptions to the schedule of when the EFAP War arc movies are coming out. They're all lined up so far. If there are interruptions, we'll let you know. Though there often are. Can't believe Ryan and Mahler died. Okay. I'm still here, damn it. <laughs> God forbid. Obi telling the drug dealer to go home and rethink his life was the best intentional humor of the prequels. Yeah, it was funny as fuck. Imagine the famous yeah. Revenge of the Sith convo, but it's George Costanza and Jerry Seinfeld. You turned her against me, Jerry. It'd be pretty funny. Something good for... Well, because we need something to talk about... Uh, today, theory. What are your top five problems with Andor? Mahler can defend. We have enough to talk about. Today. <laughs> yeah, we got plenty to talk about. 
We haven't yeah. really like. Uh, I was gonna ask you about Battlefront too, like how how it's been going for you. Because I know you streamed it a few times. Um, I've been enjoying it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's definitely not worth the price tag. They didn't really do all that much. The, I mm -hmm. mean, the game runs. The first one would just always kind of. Did you um do the five hundred first campaign, or have you mainly just been? Playing? I'm still playing it. Yeah, I'm still playing the campaign. Yeah, I didn't finish. Yeah, no, it's it's yeah, I'm having a good time. Because of course, I get, I get what you're saying. Like it, you know, it's like a remaster, right? So it's all the way it was. So you, you know, not even a good remaster. I assume. The problem is with the Aspire games that they've been doing, the Star Wars games. They're not really remasters. They basically like upgrade the textures and stuff, but it's not. It, it is not a full like remaster of any sort. It mm. you, it looks a little better. It plays a little smoother. You know. Um, and sometimes they optimize the controls a little better. I don't know what they did for this one yet because I haven't had a chance to play it. But um, that's how Aspire's been doing all these things. The difference is they hadn't done a multiplayer one before. Um, I, actually, I guess I don't know if they incorporated the multiplayer of Jedi Academy or not. I never checked out into that. But for like Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, for Jedi Academy, for KOTOR, like all those stuff, that people really focused on the playthrough, like the single player stuff. So I think what hurt them the most was the fact that they probably had to integrate all the online shit into it. That's my guess is where everything fell apart for them. I mean, they should have just done it all in Unreal Engine and really, really remastered the whole thing, like made it pretty amazing. But they didn't, unfortunately. Well, they I think that would have been worth the price tag. They should have just let that... Um, do you remember there was a, there was a company out there that was doing... A Kotor first person, nice old Republic, yeah. full remake yes. in Unreal Engine Five, yes, like years ago, and Lucasfilm shut them down when they decided that they were going to do Nice Old Republic remastered. And I know. That, that thing would have been fucking amazing if they would have like it, they should have just paid those guys. Be like, hey, what you're doing is awesome. Let's pay you to do it. And let's fucking do this thing together. That's what should have happened. Well, yeah. Instead, it's been they fucked reason. it up and it's been in like development hell. And now not only is it like a remaster, but it's a, like a total remake. And who knows what they're gonna add into it. Which is apparently still alive, they say. There's still mm. some hope for it. I hope it never sees the light of day. You think they're gonna botch it? Yeah, like if, like everything. <laughs> Like yes, her. exactly. The idea that initially on that project they brought in all these different writers, including Sam Maggs, who is a fucking insane bitch, right? Like, like you bring these people in to do narrative changes. There are writers. What do you have to what do you have to change? Like what the fuck do you actually have to change? Why do you need Nothing. any writers for what you're doing? You're adapting everything you have. You have a multitude, thousands and thousands of different dialogue options already built in. If you want to bring somebody in to re-record lines or whatever, that's fine. But in terms of the story outline, nothing about that shit should change unless you want to make it more acceptable for modern era. You already got Juhani. She's a lesbo in that. Like, you already got representation. You got Jolie Bindo. Come on. We got a diverse cast. We got Wookiees. We got fucking Mandalorians. We got Twilix. We got everybody. Yeah, I don't know why they want to go ahead and change everything, but just, you know, make the game look nice and update, up, up to date. To today's standards that's it thoughts on bringing generation tech or mike zero i i i, I don't think mike zero would do any stream yeah I, I would love to get mike on just you know for fun he was uh he was a good friend to me in the very beginning um but we lost contact so uh i've never talked to generation tech um George would never lead with a bloody saber. Hmm. Um. I I I guess I don't know. I, I don't think George ever told any stories that would necessitate that would necessitate the use of a bloody saber. Um. I think they're just trying to be a little bit edgy and tell you it's going to be a little bit more adult, a little more dark. Yeah. That that's what I think they're going with. Um. But yes. Looks like a, looks like a period stain to me on a pad, so I'm I'm calling it as I see him. You can't get canceled. We said we're ending the stream, so you're good. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> I can't get canceled for for looking the wrong way. 
The only thing is, can getting canceled doesn't work on me, but you'll get an uproar if I breathe. Did you see the way he exhaled? Did awesome. you see Bring the way in. he almost laughed at that joke? Yeah, literally, like, oh, like, fuck. Like, well, Ryan's one trying to on do at this point. <laughs> Kick to laugh at one of these. He's like, hey, you know, I'm leaving anyways. Might as well <laughs> leave it with a bang. <laughs> um, yeah, Geek Tim's dope. You should consider asking Tyrone Magnus to maybe come on. You might join. Yeah, he's one of my. He's gonna be uh one of the reps. Theory Savers. I'm gonna send him some. Uh, Mr. H cool. Reviews is also another awesome person you could ask. Mr. H Reviews. Don't believe I know him. So Ryan and Mahler will. <laughs> Ryan and Mahler did not kill themselves, all right? <laughs> Fuck. At least, not, over, at least not over this. So I just uh, actually FaceTimed Mark like 20 minutes before the show. Just shooting the shit, but I mean, we're friends outside of the show, so we, we talk often. Um, yeah, you know, he he's down to come on here and there, but nothing permanent. Embrace change. I'll always stay plugged into both Theory and Mahler. Keep kicking ass. In both in both realms, appreciate you guys sharing your creativity with all of us. Oh, thanks, dude. That's a nice. Oh yeah. yeah. And even though I clearly wasn't mentioned this super, <laughs> you're welcome. I won't be keeping up with Ryan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You didn't have to say it like that, but I gotcha. <laughs> what does he even do? Does he have a channel? <laughs> Yeah, I saw, I saw when it came, but he's like, I'll always stay plugged into both Theory and Mahler. Fuck Ryan, though. That's right. That's all I heard. That's okay. I'm assuming your busy schedule has to do with it. Mubschl. Yeah. That sounds German. <laughs> Mubschl. Gene, Gene yeah, it's Cream. Like a, it's like an Things I haven't, I haven't uh, done. People get mad at me because I haven't finished up my um, Arkham streams. I'm still not through City. I feel bad. Bro. Try my groom for gaming as well. And then, you know, there's like friends and family or whatever that pff, they're like, hey, you give us some attention. You're like, ugh, fine, I guess I'll hang out with you as well. It's just life. <laughs> I've often mentioned how I'd like to have. Uh, I was thinking about like the concept of if I could repeat the day and then do every, every all the other things. But then I was like, wait, but then I'd like age twice as fast, I guess. So. Oh, so you want to go. Maybe you just need. Um... Time turner. Time turner, exactly. You that's how that Harry works. Potter, dude. Yeah, that's how that's about Harry Potter, you, age, you you fucking age that extra hour or two that you set back. And eventually everyone's like, Why are you like fucking 60? I'm just like, uh, because I did everything so I burned the candle twice as bright, or whatever the, the quote Ooh. is. Burning the candle at both ends. Yeah, or burn twice as bright and half as long, right? That's I combined them because I'm genius. I think that's love. Genioso. Geonosis. But I appreciate you guys giving me a couple weeks notice here and uh you know, we'll line episodes for the future for sure. Yeah, line up episodes for the future and yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll make it special. It won't be as shocking to you. Or that actually to be more shocking to your More audience. shocking. They're used to it now. They're used to the the rampant, you know disgusting behaviors of myself mm -hmm. and sometimes Mahler on the stream. <laughs> so they're too used to it. Oh. We can't shock them anymore. So we got to ease them out and we'll freaking ram back in when they're not least expecting it. Yeah, they'll be like, glad they're gone. They're like, oh my god, they're back. Yeah, it's going to terrify them. Did you guys watch the Rebel Moon 2 trailer? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Wait, is that the trailer's out already? Isn't that coming out tomorrow? Yeah. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Oh, see, these comments make they're stupid. It, theory look like you don't give a damn ready to end the stream. No, not at all, man. Look, I mean, he always looks like that. Just as busy as these <laughs> as these boys are, I'm extremely busy with Vader episode two. And so when you see me looking down, I'm literally answering either my team or my team for Theory Savers, which we're looking to launch very soon. There's like a million things constantly going on, so it's it's all on my phone. Whereas like the boys here have to make a lot of videos and streams. All my shit is kind of like off camera, uh, mostly. So I don't mean to be disrespectful or anything. It's just sometimes, you know, I gotta, I gotta fucking take care of shit because they, if I answer them, then they can get work to work on whatever they need to get work on. And by the time I'm done the stream, they're finished, and then we can. Otherwise, it's just 
piles up. So, um, Thurp said, just like Ryan's dad and girlfriend, we cannot say we're truly disappointed in him as well. Hmm. Hey, that's what I'm going for. Thank you, Thurp. Trifecta. Nice, dude. Cool. Understandable for you both. Spread very thin. Hope y'all still do one here and there. This pod has been great. Love the dynamic. Keep it crump. <laughs> keep it crump. I'll keep it. I'll keep crumbing for you. Keep crumbing. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. Is that the guy who suggested Mary Fuck Kill? Is that, is that who that Probably. was? Probably. Because of me, so he just will always be part of you. I don't read names. <laughs> uh, did you see the Acolyte poster? Yes. Yes. Ryan loves it. The audiobook for I, Jedi was just released on Audible. Theory, have you read it? If not, Ryan, glaze it up for him. L. Mahler and Ryan, just make time, JK. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, cuck nation. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, so I actually did see that the Audible book for I, Jedi was released. So I'm looking forward to actually listening to that. Um, I don't think I've heard it ever in um, on a bridge format. So I'm looking forward to listening. I love that. I love that book because it's it's a character that I love in Corin Horn. It's an author that I love in Michael Stackpole. And he's doing it in between a story that I wasn't a massive fan of, the Jedi Apprentice trilogy. Sorry, the Jedi Academy trilogy. By Kevin J. Anderson, even though I really like Kevin J. Anderson, I didn't like that book series. Mm. I Jedi takes place in the middle of that from a slightly different perspective. And to me, it helps um, make some connections. And I think it improves the trilogy as a whole. So, yes, I Jedi glaze. I thoroughly enjoyed getting off work and watching this every Monday. It's sad to see it go. Wishing you all the best in whatever future plans you have. Thanks, bro. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate it. We'll still be back next week. That's right. We will be back next week. So yeah. we kind of lied when we said it's the end. It's like what's, fate, but also not. What's the difference between a character like Omega and a character like Perito from Pib Two? They're both hyper optimistic type characters. What's Pib Two? Uh, Puss in Boots Two. Well, I've also I would argue you, you could go with Superman or you could go with uh, Luffy. They're, they're these are all hyper optimistic characters. I think yeah. uh, Ryan brought up that Omega was a hyper optimistic character, but I don't know that that was made strictly as a criticism. It's more so the execution. She is incredibly annoying. Um, she doesn't like the the situation. Will oftentimes, at least from the brief amount of the show that I have seen, she will just often be right, and there's not not much for her to learn in terms of the real world crashing in on her when it should be in the world of Star Wars. So much of what happens works out, or she doesn't have to deal with the harsher consequences of some of her actions. Like a lot of the plot protects her from it. Or even in this episode, like um they get asked, I think I think if you got to watch at least a little bit of Mahler, you might have seen this part, but when they're talking about, oh, if we bring them here, Crosshair is gonna be with them, and I don't trust him. And Rex is like, Omega already asked him questions about it. It's like that's good enough for you that Omega yeah. like that Omega questioned him about it. It's like yeah. It's kind of like she takes the reins every time. It, yeah, it's it's just wild to me that you have this this character who is still a child, right? However long she's lived, she she's a child, and it's they are just they'll defer to her for fucking anything, despite the fact that she would be the first to be tricked by someone being nice to her. But maybe because yeah, she has maybe because she run. maybe because she has the force, you know, they're like, oh, this is why we trust her. We just don't know it yet. At least I think she's force sensitive. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to starve. No, nah, you still have me. Sad to see it end, boys. Thanks for the great streams, goats. Thanks, Nick. Nick takes all our clips and stuff and puts it on uh, Plus. Oh, nice. Great. Love to come on sometime and talk about magic and force being the same. Yeah, I'll, I'll, listen, for a sec, for all, all the people that are saying, she's older than them, she's older than them. You have to fucking understand that while all these guys were actually doing shit, Omega was locked up and doing nothing. She was a fucking yeah. assistant at a cloning facility. So shut the fuck up with that <laughs> she's older than <laughs> retarded bullshit. She has no fucking actual, like, world experience compared to these guys. Don't be fucking retarded. Like, yeah, the reason why Crosshair is interesting is because he's clearly world-weary. Like, he's yes. seen shit. Yes. Like don't don't get caught up in something like that to explain away some bullshit like what they do in this stupid show. Will you be trying any mods for Battlefront Classic Collection? Also, what is Ryan's thoughts on The Walking Dead series and comic? 
So I I never read the comics. Um, I got into The Walking Dead when it had already been out for like fucking 14 seasons. And I binge watched the first like 10. And I thought a lot of it was fucking awesome. And then it like, well, there's a reason I stopped watching it 10, you know, because I thought it it just got kind of repetitive and I got uninterested yeah. with it. But overall, for any show to go on that long is impressive as fuck. And the first, I mean, a lot of the first couple seasons I was really into. This is a good question. Who wins in a fight? Gandalf the White or Dumbledore? If my money's on Dumbledore, what do you guys think? Um, it's kind of complicated because the systems, uh, the, the, the entities that they are, like Dumbledore is a man who learned magic while Gandalf is an angel. Yeah. Like it's, it's really difficult to sort of talk about just what they exactly they're capable of and what would happen if Gandalf were to be removed from the world by a fight with Dumbledore would would the way that the balance works he would be put back in he, would he come back yeah yeah and I do this is what I will say I think that Dumbledore could more quickly like string together a fucking bunch of very powerful spells than Gandalf could we you know don't see I mean? a lot of like hyper powerful spells from Gandalf in the movies no, compared to a lot of what we see from someone like a Dumbledore. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, that's... Much different systems of magic. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, everyone's saying Gandalf. Do you guys know what Dumbledore can do? Jesus. It's just weird. It, it is tough because he's, you're not comparing, like, wizard to wizard. You're comparing uh, a right. man who's, like, shape when he comes to Middle Earth, um, like, is a man and is a wizard, but he's... He's a fucking like eternal being. You know what I mean? Because Dumbledore is just a man. Is that what he is? Mm hmm. So then why doesn't he have like full. That, that's why he's power. able to be reborn like that. So it's not Gandalf. Well, that's Gandalf the White, right? So is, yeah, it, just, yeah. is, it, is it Gandalf in. Uh, like, is it his soul still or no? It's just his form. It's what it's given us information, right? It's like it's, I am what Saruman was supposed to be, but Gandalf format. It's kind of it's it's kind of difficult to explain compared to someone like Dumbledore, who's much more straightforward, Wait. like a man who learns a magic system. So explain to me who Gandalf the White actually is. So I thought so, it was just uh, Gandalf like Super Saiyan too. Well, it kind of is, but like so Gandalf is an Astari. Um, and there are five, what, five Astaris that are sent there. You've got the two blue yeah. wizards. You've got uh, Ragged, uh, Radagast, the, the brown. brown. You've got Gandalf the Grey, and you've got Saruman the White. Right. Um, and at, ba basically, these are not... These are fucking almost like angelic beings that get sent to Middle-earth, um, and they take a different form. And to me, the I mean, the reason why Gandalf comes back, I, I guess I don't know. It's been a long time since I read the books. But I, to me, I guess the reason that Gandalf would come back in that same way as Gandalf, so everyone knows who he is. But he has ascended a little bit after oh. that. They gave him, because Saruman had failed, it, it kind of... Yeah, like, because as Gandalf. far as I could tell, they represented, like, powers of balance and influence in the world. Like, they were meant to push things in certain directions or at least give people opportunities and stuff. And then you lose... Gandalf the Grey to the Balrog and the White has been corrupted. So Gandalf the Grey is sent back as the White. That's what that's what it seems. But I'm not an expert on Lord of the Rings. You need like a Gary to explain this, maybe. Or someone who's even more obsessed than Ryan. Nerd of the Rings. Maybe. Nerd of the Rings. Hmm. But yeah, yeah he's, really he's, like not, he's not simply he's not simply uh he's not just a dude. Like if if fucking yeah. like Frodo died, he wouldn't like be come back. He wouldn't come be coming back like that. So you can't kill Gandalf the White. Um, I guess I don't know what like he got he got killed. He got fucking sent back. Aluvatar's like, hey, you still got shit to do, buddy. Mm -hmm. Gandalf right. the White. So does he have like unlimited powers? I don't really know. I don't know what their limits are. Hard to say. That's why the 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 put them against each other is kind of like uh not entirely sure who I'd pick. Okay, where where's Gary? Can we bring him in? Maybe Gary, uh, sure. you're in the chat. <laughs> Some million sub celebration. Explain to us exactly what's going on with Gandalf versus um, Dumbledore. Let me see if I can message him. 
in reality, Ga- so Gandalf, the easiest way to explain this in Harry Potter terms is Gandalf has a horcrux. Um, so even if you kill his body, his soul will come back at some point. Which means Dumbledore will be like, I got a drink from that weird thing. What's that film where he does that? He has to drink shit and he gets all sick or something. <laughs> God, you've never even seen the, <laughs> you've never even read the books, have you? No, I haven't read oh, the books. <laughs> God. I just remember him getting all mad at Harry while drinking weird shit to kill a Horcrux or something. God. Yes. Um, and it wasn't even a real one. Damn. I I guess I could send it to Nerd of the Rings too. Maybe he can help. You get a big uh, debate stream. Gandalf yeah, Lord of the Rings. Dumbledore. Yeah, Lord Dumbledore. But that Mahler, even you know, ten minutes ago, I like, correctly identified the problem is you're talking about someone who is basically an angelic being versus a man who's really good at magic um but yes still fun to talk about i guess half-blood prince um would be the the movie you're talking about mauler when he was mm-hmm. drinking the water and didn't want to and yeah, he's he just was... along for the ride i remember finding that real weird but you know what? It's been so long that I can't really speak to it in terms of how weird it is. What was weird about it? I, well, for some reason, I, all I remember is Harry force feeding him weird juice that was killing him or something. <laughs> That's what I remember of it. <laughs> like, it's probably Wait, what? not right. What? I know Harry Potter pretty good. What? He, we're talking about um, the scene in the cave when, yeah. when Dumbledore is forced to drink the potion and Harry has to keep feeding it to him. Oh, yeah. What about it? I just, all I just thought it like was all weird. the context. He's like, that's why. Yeah. He just was like, that's so weird. <laughs> why? <laughs> because I've forgotten the context. The, oh. the, so the only weird part about it, it's not weird like in the moment. It's like, okay, look at all this fucking shit. Look at how crazy it's going to be to track down all these horcruxes. And then you realize that all of the rest of them don't have any kind of protections like that around them. One's in a Green God's vault, which very tough to get into, okay? Tough to get into Green God's, but still, it's not like you have to go there and fucking make yourself insane by drinking this potion to, mm. to get it. Uh, the fucking diadem is just randomly sitting there. I also don't understand how Voldemort thought that he was the only person who'd ever found the room of hidden things. It was When he goes in there, there's just a pile of other shit that's in that fucking room that people have hidden over the years. But anyway... The room the of just in the, yeah, the room of requirement, which <laughs> they yeah, need no. the room of well, they need it's, the room of hidden things when when they're finding that, right? Brian, you just yeah, it's like just like man. a whole bunch of shit that people have left over the years. It's like Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um No, that was all Dumbledore shit. You put it in there and then you forgot the room. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, like that's what I mean. He's like he's so smug to think he's the only one that could figure that out. But if but if when he put it in there it was a pile of shit. Obviously, he wasn't the only person ever find that room. <laughs> Fucking Tom Riddle is a dumbass. Shouldn't I mean, have ever been Hogwarts. So. Um, and then, yeah, but but like that's the only one that's like this insane. Obviously, the ring was cursed. If you're dumb enough to put the ring on, like Dumbledore was, the ring was cursed, but it wasn't like under any protection. It was just buried at the Gaunt Hovel. So, didn't Mad Eye Moody die off screen in the movies? He, he did in the book. I've been so annoyed about that because I'm a big fan of Brendan Gleeson. So what the fuck? In the books, he did too. Uh, they find out after the fact that he died. Boo. On on Dungus Fletcher disapparated <laughs> as Voldemort was coming towards Mad Eye. Wait, sorry, why'd you say Dungus? Mundungus. That's his name. <laughs> Mundungus Fletcher. Mundungus Fletcher. <laughs> you fucking want. Hey, bro, it's a, it's a UK name. So. <laughs> Mundungus. <laughs> Mundungus Fletcher. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> I love it. That's why he didn't there? want to use his government name. Voldemort was very against using his government name. <laughs> Tom Did you never Riddle. read Harry Potter? Fuck no. Nerd. You can't read. No. Oh, right. Right. Um, Mundungus Among Us. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a new stream name. Mundungus. Yeah, Mundungus is the the fucking dude who Harry confronts for stealing all the shit from the house and selling the locket to um to what's her nuts the movie mm-hmm. Mall. To be fair, I barely remember the movies. 
Mm. It's about your fucking culture. Don't you know that? Is it, though? Is it really? I assume you're all fucking wizards. My favorite thing was Jason Isaacs. And I was like, man, I can't wait to see this guy play more villainous roles. And then he got fucking wrecked in that storyline. He just became like a useless and pathetic. Yeah, it kind of does happen in the book, too. Um, But no, he's phenomenal in the role, though. Did you actually think, or were you truly naive enough to believe that children stood a chance against us he's such a fucking he's scenery fucking, chewing wonderful man like <laughs> he's amazing i some of the behind the scenes stuff where he talks about some of the the ad libbing that went on mm-hmm. in chamber of secrets even is like awesome because originally he was just kind of supposed to turn around and like walk out but he's like well hopefully mr potter will always be here to save <laughs> to the save. day yeah and it was ad lib for daniel radcliffe to be like don't worry i will be as like a 12 year old you know what i mean and that's like mm. one of kind of one of the more powerful scenes in the movie too um and then he ad lib kicking dobby <laughs> kicking dobby <laughs> as he left <laughs> like he made it like a jerky motion after they cut the scene they're like what was that he's like i kicked dobby <laughs> it's like that's i just thought that's what he would do it's perfect <laughs> I wonder what they're going to do with the new show. Probably turn everyone black, but I hope yeah. not. Um, I hope it's amazing. I hope, hope it's amazing. amazing. Brady Wells. Hey, guys, got stood up on a date on Saturday. Any advice about that? Who cares? It's on the next buddy. one. On yeah, to the next one. On, on to the next one. Who cares? On to the next, baby. Mahler, you should have theory on EFAP soon, too. We could do that. Gonna miss the the Stargrift. Thoughts on the future of God of War after Ragnarok? Egypt. I think everyone wants Egypt. It would be wise for them to choose it, but at the same time, if they didn't, I'm up for seeing what what ideas they come up with, because we had like a thing where we were discussing all these different options. One could be that Kratos goes back to Greece, and the the Roman sort of religion, well, Roman mythology is building up there from the ashes of the Greek one, and that their their sort of mythology is built around this demon known as Kratos, you know, that destroyed their forefathers sort of thing. And that um, he would have to deal with trying to direct them to a better place while simultaneously dealing with the fact that all of them hate him. You know, like if you had to deal with Jupiter or um, Mars and stuff, just as these echoes of the past, but simultaneously they're these newer other faster, aspects. stronger. Yeah, these yeah. other aspects of... Yeah. I think that would be cool. I think doing... You know, any other culture, I feel like they could do a lot with it. And they've baited it, you know, with little clues and stuff in these other games. So um, I, I have a lot of trust for them, the people who've designed these stories for Kratos. So I, I'm up for anything. But I want Egypt, yeah. Uh, if if I could yeah, choose that, awesome. yeah. We have an answer from Nerd of the Rings. He says he's unavailable to join right now, but he has an answer. Gandalf, and he says it's, uh, it's a little bit snarky. Gandalf orchestrated the fall of a demon of a dark lord capable of conquering the world and took down another angelic level being before his upgrade to Gandalf the White. Dumbledore dueled with a draw. Dumbledore, Dumbledore dueled a draw with a dark lord who fails to kill a child and take over a high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but have you been cons- have you considered that it's because Voldemort didn't understand love? You know, that's oh, that always gets me, you know. That's uh, the reason why he failed all those things. <laughs> that's actually hilarious. It's very relatable. Voldemort. <laughs> Lord dueled a draw with a dark lord who fails. Dark right, well, lord hold on, listen. Religion. Gandalf was the one who was too retarded to think about fucking using the eagles from the very fucking oh, beginning. Oh, God, here all we right? go. <laughs> all right, like, listen. So, if you're going to be throwing barbs... <laughs> Garrett Wasn't there so an triggered. answer from uh, Tolkien about the Eagles? Was it Tolkien or was it just sort of fans and stuff? I think there was an answer. Remember. Wasn't there? In one of his letters, maybe, potentially. I, I think there sure. was something. I mean, yeah, most people are familiar with, like, there's a couple different ideas for why he wouldn't do it. 
being the not taxis, they have their own interests, autonomous sort of stuff. But then also that it's dangerous. Also, the whole thing could fall apart if they were shot over Mordor sort of thing. It's a um, oh. couple things to consider, though. I've always maintained that I think it deserves a throwaway line in the movies. Um, just something to recognize it. So the audience is like, oh, okay. Yeah, Gandalf's yeah, like, is like, they just got back from vacation or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, they flew south for the winter. Yeah, but like exactly. in, in the Elrod's meeting, they're, they're talking about it and then they just look to the left and there's a giant eagle as part of the meeting. He goes, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> so you have to find something. That's else. like a family guy moment. Yeah. Uh, I still think Traitor is the best EU novel. It turned Jason Solo from my most narrating. Irritating new Jedi Order character to my most favorite. Yeah. Um, Traitor's really good. You go through a very uh, dark change with Jason Solo. It's cool. And you get... Wait. I don't think that's where you get Ganner's last stand. It might be, though. If it is, it's fucking amazing. I'm concerned about... Oh, he's answering. I'm concerned about Acolyte breaking canon since weren't supposed... <clears throat> Since Sith weren't supposed to have been seen for hundreds of years before Phantom Menace, Holtzum sad to hear Stargrift is ending. It's been so great. Yeah, you know, unless they have it in a way where the Sith still don't <clears throat> get noticed. That's the the only way this can happen. It looks like it's going to be a fucking disaster. It's going to be bullshit. But the only way they could do this without horrendously destroying canon is if nobody who goes on to continue working with the Jedi is ever able to either discover or escape alive with the truth that Sith are in the galaxy. Hmm. And you can like listen. You can do it. You, you can you definitely do it. do it. And over the course of guess over the course of a thousand years, a millennia, right? Of <gasps> um staying hidden, all these things. There are there's close calls, right? Of course there's gonna be times where they almost get caught or busted for one reason or another. But got to be very, very careful playing with fire this close to the prequels, especially with characters who we know will be alive for the prequel. Yeah, like what the hell? I just really hope they don't mess up Yoda. It's my only yeah, concern I, with them no. uh, <laughs> touching these legacy characters like that. Looks like a period stain that poster does. <laughs> Fuck, dude. <laughs> that wouldn't ruin Yoda. That... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll see what happens. A lot to say about it. I have. Oh, wait. Did it... Right. Uh, best of luck, Mauler and Rye Guy. I thought you were going to say and Guy. And Guy. <laughs> <laughs> best of luck, Mauler and other guy. Y'all made Mondays worth it to theory. I'm counting down the days till site launch. Hopes aren't high for Acolyte. Hey, we're getting really close, man. Constantly mm. in, in talk, working 24-7. Um, so is everyone else? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm worried about it, but, um, about Acolyte, but, you know. Maybe, we'll you know what, maybe we'll get to see in this. I didn't even think about it. There's some unexplained questions about Grogu. <gasps> maybe we get to see Yoda and Yaddle's secret affair. Oh. Get to see I don't those, to see those little greens clapping cheeks. I don't want to see that. <laughs> what do you mean? I what if I they did so. it? What if they went totally like George Lucas style, use real puppets and everything like that? And none, of this, none of this CGI Yoda Yaddle fuck fest. We want it to be practical effects. Yes. Like it was intended. And yeah, and Darth Maul was a little baby looking over the edge. And what if like, we got George Lucas's approval? Like they actually passed it through him first. That's true. See, theory's convinced. We got him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm worried about this show. <laughs> I I was really excited when they announced it a while ago. I'm like, oh, cool premise. But then, as you know, that was like what 2018. Um, like. no, it was at, it was definitely after the fallout from Rise of Skywalker. Um, maybe 2021, something like that. It's I guess it's been in development for a while though. I don't think so because I remember I was in my old apartment when um they announced it. So that was like. Three, four years ago, at least. Three, it was probably four. 2020 or 2021. Yeah, because it was after Rise of Skywalker because Leslie Headland made yeah, that plea at the Rise of Skywalker premiere in December of 2019. Leslie Headland 
was like, please, please, Queen Kathy, Queen Kathy Kennedy, give me a job. I'll do anything Star Wars. Remember that interview that didn't really until after no. she got hired? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I didn't. I didn't. No, oh, sorry. When she's asked what her favorite Star Wars movie is, and she's like, I love all the Star Wars. Wow. You, you oh, don't remember that? Neat. I remember that. Yeah. How could oh. I forget? Yeah, let me, uh, Le Leslie Headland, yeah. which she was already at the fucking premiere. Okay, so the answer that Nerd of the Rings has uh, as to why Gandalf didn't use the Eagles. <laughs> so I've, he says, I've got to make a vid on that topic. There's a few reasons, but the most compelling reason in my mind is that a move like that would be expected by Sauron. In the Council of Elrond, they talk about their best chance being secrecy. Sauron would be aware of such an attempt long before they reached Mount Doom. He's got fell beasts, the flying creatures the ring wraths use that could intercept. Okay, well, that makes sense. Mm, ring wraths. Well, I still would have, it would be neat if we had that in the film. Just, uh, all the books, right? Is it in the books? Like explicitly, or is it sort of something we have to infer? I don't know. I haven't read the books. I, I think it's, you know, it, it's inferring. Yeah. Yeah. I think I read like a quarter of the Fellowship of the Ring when I was 11 or something. It's heavy. It's a heavy book. I'm doing my best to find these fucking. I don't know where this. Congratu is. Congratulations to Nerd Roddick for one million subs. Nice. Hell yeah! About time. That's true. He beat Dan, right? So yeah. Dan's gonna do the man buns Dan, are gay thing. Yeah, Dan has to do a song called "Man Buns Are Gay" <laughs> that Gary's gonna write, and then Dan has to make the song. I mean, his his <laughs> views are indicative of a channel with like ten million subs. Yeah, it's pretty so, crazy. It's crazy. I'm just glad I got to be a part of his um, the video that took him across the finish line. Uh, ironically, it was a review for the American Society of Magical Negroes, which ah. is out in theaters right now. And I was able to play a part in that. So, so. What? Say what? There's a movie that's out right that? now called The American Society of Magical Negroes. That's yeah, a movie. It's pretty famous. It's it's supposed to be a satire. Are you serious? Because um, I, I I saw Eric posted a a thing, but I thought he was just like you know having a laugh and because like, he you could do that because he he's black. You just thought he was calling himself a magical Negro, huh? Literally. Yeah, yeah. No, he was just talking about the movie. There's a movie the called movie. The American American Society of Magical Negroes. The entire thing is meant to be a satire based on the trope in hollywood which it's not even a trope anymore it's a trope maybe like 30 years ago 40 50 years ago of kind of a, a story where the white person's the protagonist and there's just a random black person who might be a little bit like spiritual or magical or have powers that gives them good advice for the sole purpose the entire reason that black person there is to give advice to the white protagonist and that got coined uh the magical negro trope by spike lee like 20 fucking years ago or something and so this is a movie that is supposed to be a satire based off that trope in film industry. Unfortunately, the entire movie acts like racial relations are back in the 19 fucking fifties. Um, and it's about a trope that you have to explain like I did to people because outside of very few people, no one knows what the magical Negro trope even is. And half the people are too afraid to fucking say the name period. Um, so yeah, I, thought he, it, I thought he was making like a, like a Harry Potter joke or something. I was like, what? I didn't really understand. I was just scrolling, and I'm like, "Oh, okay." okay. You were like, "You should have just replied, what's your house, bro?" Uh, <laughs> uh, Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. Uh. But anyway, that movie's out. It's horrendous. If it were actually like outrageous enough to be like funny, it could be good. But... Thoughts on the EU ditching the Force ghosts? Uh. I don't think they ditched the force ghosts. They had them. Um, not everybody came and hung out for f so fucking long like Obi-Wan. But... Unless you're Luke to Jade, just to troll his ass. Well, Mara Jade um, waited. Yeah. Waited a long time to appear as a force ghost to Luke um, after they'd kind of figured everything out. Sorry, uh, Jason. To, to, to And then he like took death sticks to cut himself off. You're talking about Cade Skywalker. Cade. Did I yeah, say yeah, Jason? Yeah. You said Jason. Did I say Jade? Yeah. You said Jade at first. Why am I saying? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, Cade. Cade Skywalker is a descendant of Luke Skywalker. Um, he's in the comic books 
in the legacy run, which takes place like 140 years after the movies. So he's a descendant of Luke. And um, he does like to sever his connection from the force because he doesn't want to be preached to by Luke Skywalker about why he <laughs> needs to like fucking like get the Jedi back together. He literally just gets fucking high on death sticks. So he, Dude, it's, it's, so he can't, so he doesn't have to listen to force ghost Luke Skywalker. Yeah. <laughs> and he also fucks a bunch of Sith. Hmm. You guys see the terrible Yara trailer? CW levels of cringe, both as bad as woke AF. A black lady told an old white guy he was threatened by women. Um, yeah, I, I saw the Yara trailer. I, I talked about it a little bit. I didn't get the, <laughs> I didn't get the woke as fuck part out of it. However, I, I did say the accent kind of, really it really threw me off i don't know exactly what kind of accent it was supposed to be i think we've found out what it actually is uh recently i don't know if that's a violation of nda or not um and yeah to me it's a it's a trailer to promote a release of a comic book if this was the trailer for like a season-long cw show or a movie or something i i can't tell you i'd be like excited to watch the rest of that but it, i mean it's a trailer to promote a comic book and you know i think it did what its job was but, uh, you know, I guess that's how I feel about it. That's Eric's comic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And they, one, like they, it? they got made 1.2 million. So if it was meant to generate excitement, it looks like it did that. Yeah. Maul hit Qui-Gon in the face with his saber before stab. Yeah. Want to play Classic Collection right now? Click Collection. Get Saga Edition mod for Battlefront 2. Classic done. Isn't there two versions now then on Steam for Battlefront 2 Classic? Or, well, both? Which yeah. Is, the, is there a better one currently? Does everyone know that the new version is just definitively worse? Or oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's just, it's a bit clunky, right? The the OG one. Because um, I remember trying to play it on stream and like there's resolution changes between the, the UI, like main menus and the actual in-game stuff. I couldn't seem to fix that. I remember there just being issues. I can't remember. Um, I haven't like seen anyone do a breakdown of it. This has got to be someone who has though, because th this is part of what frustrates me about all this. Is like it's, it's. I just don't understand how they don't know there's a huge fan base behind this, and there's a huge fan base ready to go. Right? It's not even necessarily who's waiting. There's people no, who get drawn really into this if it was really good, because they people would just be like, "You played it when you were fucking like five, didn't you?" And then someone's like, "Oh yeah, I did." And it's yeah. on Steam now, really? Yeah, okay, I'll check it out. Yeah, the, the other one's been on Steam for a while, but I don't know what the lobbies look like or the multiplayer for that and what the capabilities are. I have no idea. Funny coincidence, now we get the story on the beginning of the downfall of the Republic. You should get Anna, the Star Wars girl in here. May have been short, but it was definitely sweet. I will miss this trio. Can't wait for Ryan and Mahler to tear apart Acolyte. Well, if you well, feel like you're missing that, we will be back to do exactly that. Yeah, we never we'll have a chat about it. <laughs> we never got the bombad Jedi discussion. <laughs> Gonna miss the grift. You should get Christian Harloff on the pod, rotating guest. You know, I asked Christian to do a show uh, a little while ago together, and he was down, and then uh, he switched up like within a day, and then said that he's busy, but then started doing uh, shows with other people. So I don't know what the deal is with that. But uh, I'm going to stick to my own boys and just keep going with that. So, or I'll do it alone. Is Vader Episode 2 all CG or part? Yes, it's all CG. Get Beardo on. Might manage more love here than Sport Wars. Damn, dude. Damn. I am one with the grift and the grift is one with me. Need some stability Aww. in my life? You be the stability in your life. Yeah, be your own yeah. rock. Yeah. Um, many of us are viewers of both you and Josh and don't like seeing the current fallout. Oh, Jesus, bro. Can we just move on? Like, Josh has said that he's reached out and still sees you as a friend, so the way you talk about him be rubbing people the wrong way. I don't talk about him. Yeah, I don't... So, I don't feel like you talk about him unless a super chat asks you and then you just give an opinion that seems to be pretty light. Yeah, so I don't know what you guys are trying to dig at here. If, like, you, do you want something to be found or not? Like, him and I did a show, it's done. What? 
What do you want? What am I supposed to do? Like, just leave it at that, bro. Hey, That's all it is. You you be rubbing people the the wrong way, theory. Tell me how I'm doing that. You got to rub it the right way, like mm, a I genie, guess. like a genie in the bottle. I guess. Yeah. I, Let me know Christina how I can do Aguilera. that. Yeah, I'd love to rub it the right way for you. <laughs> I was just bringing old episodes yesterday, binging old episodes yesterday and today. I'm really going to miss this. You have a great dynamic. Good luck, lads. I hope you can return sometime. We will. No one's ever really gone. I think you got us next week. For yeah, exactly. Sure. We're going to be here next week. Right. Right. At first, I wasn't a fan of the show, but I instantly started to enjoy this and y'all's connection. Going to miss the boys. May the force be with you. May the falls be with you. Will there be a Stargrift episode on Bad Batch once it concludes? You can't just start the season and leave us hanging as to your thoughts. Um, I mean, I'm Talk not as invested in talking about Bad Batch. And that's a lot of episodes, you know? Is it going to be a 13 episode season? Wait, this one? I thought it was more than that. No, uh, probably. I mean, it's probably 13 to 16. Mm. Let me look. Um, fuck, because they're supposed to end uh, around May 4th, right? So that would be like six more weeks. Yeah. Uh, how many episodes? Bad Batch Season 3. 11. 11. So it means it was four weeks? Yeah, I guess. I mean, the episodes are short anyway, so I don't know if it is about that. It might just be that I don't like Bad Batch. Might be. <laughs> like, not that that's some kind of huge secret. Yeah, that's a, that's a spoiler alert right on the screen. <laughs> Bro, the, the Acolyte is going to be so fucked. Um, and yes, Lord Vader, the Acolyte will have a woman lead. The entire thing is about women. They were very clear about that from the beginning. Um, but look at what they're going to have to go up against. June is looking stacked for TV. Oh, House of the Dragon is going to kill The Bear, it. the Boys, and House of the Dragon Oof. all coming out in June Oof. along with the Acolyte. The fact that he's put this fucking Wookiee. Why would they put the Wookiee? <laughs> Why not like someone with a red lightsaber? Is it because he looks goofy? <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> hey, I, I, don't know, I don't know why they put this motherfucker here, but... House of the Dragon's gonna absolutely fucking bend them over. Oh yeah, I don't know. I think the boys is gonna do pretty good. House eh. of the Dragon's gonna remind Leslie Leslie Headland of who Harvey Weinstein is. That's what's gonna happen uh, to the acolyte here. I've seen people like already discussing like the future of House of the Dragon with hype. It's not even out yet, you know, like the the season two because because obviously the books built in fan base, and then the fact that season one was good. It's like that's that's on its way. The first um, episode, Mahler, is going to blow your mind. I already know the rumblings. I don't know any spoilers at all. I just know that you guys have been saying something like, is it blood and cheese or cheese and wine or something over and over again? Blood and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> blood and bat cheese. Blood and bat cheese. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, that's going to be fun talking about that. Thank you, Mikel. Herrera Gutierrez. Wasn't Filoni supposed to set things up for the OT when he worked on the Clone Wars? He kind of didn't do that, so who knows? Maybe everything doesn't lead to the sequels. What? I mean, huff the copium, I guess, right? Get that tank right in there. It's, uh, it's, I, I, I think that it's worth thinking that things don't go that way, but I, I, just, I just think that they are. Like, it's... it's... Listen, All of if, it, even if there was some sort of hint, actual clue that they were not going to connect to the sequels, then I think it's like okay to like, you know, keep on that train. But unfortunately, like the exact opposite is true. Every project they've done is connected to the sequels, basically, the including thing is you can all still, the Mandoverse and the Mandalorian. You can still hope for some good stories along the way, yeah. Even if it has the sequels, so yeah. But the problem is because they, they have not decided to do like a little standalone story. They decided intentionally to do a story that talked about how this connects to the sequels. And that's what John and Dave said from the beginning. 
one of the first press releases about the Mandalorian, they said, we want to be able to connect um, all eras of Star Wars, from the prequels to the original trilogy to the sequels. And that's what we think we can do with Mandalorian. And they, I mean, they've, they weren't lying. That's what they're doing. Will Mando movie have bigger budget than Ray? I don't know. I doubt it. I don't. That doesn't sound like <laughs> Disney, you know? I don't know. Drinker Next would be great. Curious if it's possible to have smaller channels have one-offs of the Steam stream occasionally. I remember you've done that a little. I did that a little in the in the past and uh, ended up kind of biting me in the ass. So I don't know if I'm really down for that anymore. I'm kind of tired of, of, of people just using my platform for uh, to get views and and then you know treating me like shit in the process. So I'm I'd rather just work with people that I really trust and people that won't just use me. So that's that's the motto for 2024. No more being used. Yeah. That's, that's where I'd like to go forwards with. Me too. Fuck. Do you see me just jerk my earbuds <laughs> out? Yeah, that was nice. Especially which uh, Salacious was doing. Yeah. Aren't those headphones like 1800 out the door? Yeah, they were pretty expensive. And they are very, very high quality. Great studio headphones. One word, Melvin. Please, Theory, don't bring Josh back. He's a shill who would spread his cheeks for Disney and Filoni. Well, I don't know about that. Let I'm him sure cook. He just has his own opinions. I enjoyed the grift. Mahler, I put your 12-hour EFAPs on at night and let them play. Hail 199. Congrats, Gary. People are still mad at us for doing five hour EFAPs these days. They're like, what the fuck? You're cutting it off. It's like, dude, like, please. <laughs> five hour streams already. It's kind of what I mean, right? Like everything getting a bit shorter. I'm going to lose my reputation. I know, right? First, didn't we, didn't we agree to these streams to be like an hour and then it's two hours, something like that? And then, and then it's three four hours in a row. Four. Yeah, four. we did two four hour streams in a row. Yeah. Do you think if we had kept it at an hour and a half to two hours, you would have continued? No, I it's it's the doing prep and the existence of them at all, right? Like it kind of knocks out my Mondays a little bit, which is okay. Um, in terms of like, I found them I find them really fun, and I love you guys, but I just uh, can't. There's fit no them other in. day, hey? It just doesn't fit. I mean, I, I always feel weird saying, in theory, that I could, mm -hmm. you know, fit in a lot of even more podcasts, but the fact yeah, is, it'll it'll it's have realistic for you. It like yeah. drains, and uh, I only start to notice when. I'm like late for things or I've not done the work I was supposed to for a thing. And I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is bad. Fair enough. Did you know that Polish death metal band called Vader extremely menacing? I did not. Stargrift ending meant to be a death blow. A death blow? What do you mean? Stargrift ending meant to be a death blow. Um, No, I don't. I don't think so. I really don't know how you mean that, but no, it's not a death blow. We still pay Mahler big bucks. It's not about money. He just doesn't have time. Yeah, I really don't. It's, there's no. Well, I mean, there probably would be an amount of money, like fucking millions or whatever. But like, I don't think theory's gonna. Wait, be what would be? The, well, hold, no, hold on. Yeah, well, hold on. What would be the? What would be? That's interesting. What, it would be something absurd because, like, like, some, uh, like it, per it, like per show. Let's say per show. Like, what would? What would what? What would be the number? I don't. Oh, know. you don't have to. I don't have puts you on. You don't have to answer. Well, it's just uh, to what I'm trying to highlight is it's both not about the money <laughs> and is it's not in the sense that it would have to be some absurd amount where I'd be like, oh shit, I can do a lot of good with that. You know what I mean? Ten grand a show? It's some whatever. Like I have no idea what the number would actually be, but it's really not about the money. I um. Yeah, I know. I like these well, shows for the conversation. Hold on. What what if what if we did what if we did these shows? What if we did the show only for members and each member? It's not, it's really, like, I don't even like doing that. I, like, it's not about the money at all. I'm just trying to make room for the right, like, sort of creative opportunities yeah. and do yeah. them well, sort of thing. A million dollars a show. <laughs> I will come back for that. <laughs> uh, prestige, explain. Why prestige what? is really good. Uh, I tried to do this on. I think it was open bar recently. Didn't I do it on the last Star Grift? I could have sworn was it that someone I was talking about? It's because you said you didn't want to talk about it because you didn't want to ruin it for you or something. 
No, I, well, I was saying that I haven't done a video on it yet because I worry about like fucking it up because there's so much I want to say about it, you know. Um, but it was just it's my favorite movie of all time. Um, I could have sworn I said a bunch of things about it, and then Theory was like, "Oh yeah, I should check that out." So I'm, I'm almost in. I did all this in the last episode, right? <laughs> I feel gaslit. Unless they mean explained the like something about it, I don't know. Yes, we know. We know it's not the point, Raph. We know we're just having fun with the hypothesis and theory of it. The Star Wars theory, theory, the money theory, the Mahler money theory. Uh, damn, the best Star Wars podcast on YouTube burned bright as a shining star and just as quickly was extinguished. Absolutely. <laughs> calamitous news monday is going to be back going back to being the worst weekday now what do you mean you still have me <laughs> <laughs> and Sorry, we will X return this. we shall return yeah we're gonna make it more special okay we're gonna be like the fucking mcrib yeah. or, the world, yeah. or the world cup you can get fucking randomly excited for no reason every four years uh, or whatever whenever we do the stream if carrie hadn't passed do you think leia's role would have been bigger and yes yeah was she been killed off? I don't know. Probably not. I doubt it. Who is in charge of giving Aspir the classic games? Lucasfilm can't do anything right. Fumbling our characters, our games. But hey, we get a Ray movie. Yeah. I know. I mean, there's a reason they got like stripped of the KOTOR remake or whatever. They just couldn't handle it. Mm, we do what sorry will you do saber giveaways in battlefront 2 lobby yeah we're, we're getting ready to launch the site soon i mean i know i keep saying soon but there is just so much work i don't want to just put up some shit site and be like here you go there's a lot of work and a lot of customization that goes into my products i don't want to just release the same old generic stuff that's on the market Sad to see the potential end of an interesting podcast experiment. Can we get one more video game tutorial Omega for the road? <laughs> Maybe next week. Yeah, you can explain the difference between OG Dark Troopers and the new ones to Mauler. What do you mean the OG Dark Troopers and the new ones? Yeah, I mean, so the, the OG Dark Troopers are from... God, I think it was Dark Forces with Kyle Katarn. It's the first time they popped up. Um, oh, those ones, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna probably take a while, but that's where they got the idea though for the dark troopers that they um decided to shove into to Mandalorian. Oh, okay. What about the are they, are they called dark troopers? The class in um Battlefront 2 as well, yeah, the it's, ones a that have jetpacks? it's a different kind, yeah. Oh, okay, you mean the new Battlefront 2. No, the um classics, right? The, on the uh, Empire team, you get the. I think I, th I thought they were called. Maybe they're not called Doctor, but the ones that can they have a jetpack. They, they typically do. Yeah, yeah. Gary there was there was several it. different iterations of of Dark Troopers. There was like several phases. Gary says he mm -hmm. can't make it. He says just tell them Lord of the Rings is the greatest trilogy ever and better than Star Wars. <laughs> He's not wrong. Not wrong. Um, Moobs started Soma on your rec. Enjoying so far. What? Soma. It's one of my favorite video games of all time. It's all about what makes a person a person. Blows my mind how Aspir cut out all the post-mission cutscenes in Battlefront 2. We're only getting half the 501st Journal in the new release. That's fucked up if they missed that. Since no one asked, how are your eye issues going? Hoping for the best. Sorry to see Mauler and Ryan having to go. Happy they'll be back. Yeah, I'm happy they'll be back too. Um, it's not the end, but uh, the end of right now. Yeah, no, eyes fine. There's just a uh, fluid buildup that's separating my retina. And so, like, you know, I haven't been able to properly see out of my right eye, like, fully. There's, like, a bit of a burn mark. Um, it's, like, a weird, dark part. But the left eye is okay. The left eye has it too a little bit, but uh, not as much. So we're going to do some more tests in about two to three weeks, and then uh, we'll see what happens from there. Either it goes away on its own, which I don't think it will because it's been a while, or, or we'll do uh, some laser, shoot a laser into it, and that'll take care of it apparently. 
Thanks for it's asking. Pretty Star Warsy, right? Fixing the problem it, with lasers. Yeah. yeah. I'm still wondering why the Battlefront remaster was over 60 gigabytes. Wonder what they added that made it that big. Also sad that the boys are leaving. It's kind of weird that like movies are just getting extremely expensive today and games are getting bigger and bigger. I mean, higher def, it would make sense, but this one feels a lot less justified. Like, Yeah, there are games that look way better than this and that are, yeah. are smaller. I've seen people say that they just didn't bother with compression. They were like, ah, fuck it, whatever. You okay. know, gamers have bigger hard drives these days. Yeah, probably saved them some money. Have you seen the new vid about Critical Drinker by Jose? Could be a fun video to see a fap on. Sad to see the grift ending. Thanks for the amazing content. Uh, Jose. I'm not sure who Jose is. <laughs> so, <laughs> best of luck to him. <laughs> Thank you, Dream. Matthew yeah. Hart for five says, Ryan, in theory, what did you think of the TCW arc where Obi-Wan goes undercover as the bounty hunter, Reiko Hardeen, and doesn't tell Anakin? Um, isn't that to, like, kind of sniff out some fucking assassination attempt on Palpatine or something? Uh, I know the one you're talking about where he, like, undergoes, like, he transforms so he, like, looks like him. And I think even has to talk to Anakin at one point. Doesn't he? Doesn't he have to interact with Anakin like that? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was reading uh, something for the site. Ryan, in theory, what did you think yeah. of the two arc where Obi Andy goes undercover as the bounty hunter Reiko Hardeen and doesn't tell Anakin? Uh, you know, I thought that was like v beyond Star Wars' capabilities because if you could just change your face, uh, I feel like, you know, maybe Luke would have done that with the Emperor or something. The or juice potion. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but like, didn't I get the thing that's I don't remember too much about it other than didn't Anakin meet undercover Obi undercover Obi Wan at one point, like during that? Did mean? they ever come face to face during that at all? While Obi Wan oh, was yeah. trying to keep his cover, how would yeah. Anakin not sense him in the Force? That was always like my thing with that. Like, there's no way you're telling me that like Anakin doesn't sense who Obi Wan like really is. Yeah, I, I sense know, I... something. Her presence I've not felt since my master pretended to be a bounty hunter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that was always the thing that made no sense about it. But again, I don't, I don't recall a ton of details about those uh, episodes. But yeah, I don't even know how he changed his face. I don't remember. Didn't didn't Obi Wan like fake his death? Show sure, funny yeah, all this did. sounds to yeah. me. I, I know. <laughs> Do you have X Wing and Drunk 3PO on? Yeah, hey, you know, I'd be down for that. Feels like Filoni is just using Star Wars to create his own fantasy world and is messing with the Star Wars lore. I mean space whales. Space whales is a little strange, but I mean in a in a in Star Wars you can kind of do anything. So Theory video idea. What if space whales mating? makes it rain on whatever planet there and so sorry ryan i'll check out your content too now you're really <laughs> you're really going to want to be out there with an umbrella for that and thank you jay rag and heart did you see acolyte synopsis discussing film post i did not i'm blocked by discussing film or else like yeah he's blocked me as well yeah i don't even yeah. know who that is just some piece of shit <laughs> sorry, I've, I've like never replied or retweeted or anything with that account but i'm blocked. what the fuck it's blockchain shit, yeah. Are you blocked too? Yeah, I'm blocked. I don't know why I'm blocked. I don't know what I did. The fuck did I do? Yeah, yeah. It's like they, they block out. Like they block. I don't know if it is a blockchain, but they block <laughs> a lot of people. What did I do, man? I don't even know this. <laughs> you, you're streaming with us. That could oh, actually man. be it. That you uh, followed our accounts. Oh, what a fucking baby. Uh, losing Mahler is whatever, but lose. I gotta be in my echo chamber. Ah. <laughs> Losing Mauler is whatever, but losing Ryan too is devastating. JK, I'm sad about this pod ending. Do more Star Wars. Uh, I agree. Don't worry, yeah. I'm going to make a video tomorrow about the Acolyte trailer. I'll make more Star Wars content for you. <laughs> One of the best things about the show is really getting to see Ryan's knowledge on Star Wars and his profound insight. You three have been great. I agree. And again, we're not we're Thanks, not Josh. going away forever. We'll still, you know, the band will get back together. But uh, it's, 
We're still relatively new. I think it's only been like a couple it's months. Only been like, yeah, it's only yeah. been like a couple of weeks or whatever, really. So <laughs> weeks. Well, <Yeah. laughs> the fuck, bro? It's been like three months. For you guys, not for me. Yeah, you've been here since... Um... I mean, you're probably like four or five weeks or something. Didn't you guess like twice and then you became just on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that episode like four or five or something? It was, it was pretty early. You know, really early. we're on 13 now, is it? Oh, that's lucky. Oh, I don't know, man. Yeah. Mm. But thank you, Josh. I appreciate that. Mahler, tell him about Hello Greedo. What about it? Like, the Hello Greedo is another sort of Star Wars channel. I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot because you could have like a good connection with him or whatever, but he's he's kind of like a EFAP semi regular who's really retarded. <laughs> he says a lot of really funny things. Uh, he wears like a Stormtrooper helmet all the time. Um, I'm trying to remember like what his big memes were, but we haven't covered him in a long time. He just he says some funny things. Mm. Mahler and Ryan, what were your last Jedi theater reactions? Also, theory will be getting more theory talk streams. Y yeah, uh, we will. I'm I'm sorry, man. I've just been the site really has kept me extremely busy to the point where you know I, I just don't have time for anything else. Um, I did not go see the Last Jedi in theaters, so I don't know. I was really confused. I remember being like, I don't know what the fuck just happened with all of that. I think I, I think I mentioned it on a past autograph, but I went home and I talked to Metal Commander and Fortier, who, if you watch EFAP, you may remember the both of them. And they were both talking about how much they did like it, but some stuff was weird. And I distinctly remember Fortier saying he thought the what happened with Snoke was awesome. And I was like, what like what did you like about it? And he was like, you know, the fact that he's like, oh, I'm a big bad, like I'm a I'm the Emperor type guy, but he just gets fucking killed. And I was like, yeah, but like, but why do you like it? <laughs> yeah, because and it wasn't because I was trying to like argue him out of it. I legitimately was trying to understand my own feelings about it. I was like, isn't that shit though? Like that Snoke's just gone. That was like two movies to build up a bad guy we barely knew and then just died. And he was like, yeah, but it was like, you know, it was different. It's kind of yeah, and that sort of wore off real quick, you know, like the shock and surprise of some of the twists and turns of TLJ really wore off quick, and that the what you think about it, how you feel about it, just dies so quickly, and then you realize what you lost, right? Like all the different potentials they could have done were all gone, and then you realize it really sets in. Like the Luke stuff, once that had really, you know, I was just like, fuck, this movie was awful. So I hated Force Awakens so much. I gave it a chance and went and watched it, and I fucking despised it, and I. I hated how happy everybody was and how hyped everybody was because I didn't see that. I saw like the complete opposite. So I didn't even go to the theater for Last Jedi. I anticipated the reactions being the same. And then I was like so pleasantly surprised when I like check out some YouTube streams and videos and a lot of people that are like really mad about it. I'm like, hey, this is how I felt after Force Awakens. Let me see what these guys are talking to. And, uh, and here we are. I mean, I remember the more I wrote the... Uh... The rage video, the, the angrier I was getting, because it's just like, it's just one of those things I think where you go from I'm watching someone deliver a story to me, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get into it and accept it as it is, and you move over to being critical of it as like someone wrote this and delivered it to me as part of a IP that I enjoy, and they've ruined it, <laughs> like they fucked it up. In, in the same vein as like a restaurant. If you have that friend who like eats something that's cold and it's just like, yeah, whatever. I'm sure the, ch the chef really tried. And you're like, nah, man, this is not acceptable. We paid for it to be fucking hot. It, it takes time to process things sometimes. Yeah. Like, I, I remember I, I've talked about this a couple times before. The drive home from watching Endgame, um, I felt so much different about it as I was like waiting to get out of my seat at the theater than I did after my 30 minute drive home. You know, like, because I was just like thinking about all the things that kind of bugged me about it and processing. Mm -hmm. Man, would God, would Captain America really do this? Mm -hmm. You know, would Captain America really sit there in his recliner as 9 11 happened? Hey, you, oh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, thinking about things in my head about the like how they set up things and it just like bugged me. But when you're in it though, you're in this moment of man, over a decade. And all these different movies you watch, it's all like leading up to this. And you're kind of like very in it in that moment. And then you get a chance to step back and actually process some of it. And you feel a little different. Yeah. And I feel like um, that's kind of indicative of how everything's happened with Marvel. A lot of people lost it with Endgame. And then a lot of people lost it with subsequent movies coming out. And there's people as recent as like 
the Marvels was the the tipping point. They were like, oh, you know what? This is bad now. Yeah, that's well, when the media. <laughs> that's when the media finally is ready to. Admit, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the MCU is falling apart. You're there's like, oh, something yeah. wrong with the MCU. <laughs> oh, weird. They're weird. Well, yeah, I didn't like Endgame. I I don't like time travel stuff all that much. Uh, I didn't like how they took Thanos, killed him, and then you know went back in time to a baby Thanos, or like a younger Thanos who isn't the same Thanos. Uh, I didn't like Fat Thor at all. No. Um. The Last Jedi was first in the theater and the last to leave. I was sitting there, sitting there trying to like process, be like, what did I just watch? Um, but I really tried to take the Sam Witwer approach and be like, okay, there's, there's some, there's got to be something here because this is Star Wars, so it can't, it can't be, uh, it can't be what I, th what I know it is now, which is just a bunch of boardroom executives not knowing what they're doing and completely diluting the franchise. Um, Unless you have, you know, Dave Filoni working on it, which I, I know you guys are disagree on that. Uh, Hardly. Yeah. Just a little bit. Bigly. Bigly. And I don't agree with all of his decisions, but if we don't got anyone better. Um, well, you just yeah, said Sam dude, Whitler, right? He'd be better. I think Sam Whitler would be better. I don't know. Some, some of the stuff he says is a little bit too, like, politician he's a little too like political in the sense where he's like well you know we need to it's like bro like come on like let's just sometimes like call it for what it is like yo this is bullshit you know i know i know he's working for lucasfilm but it's like dude let's just be candid you know i think that's what we need we need more people to be candid and real and be like yo this is dumb like what is this, this well, i mean sense. surely you'd agree he's more candid than dave filoni because he was on like his i don't know if it was yeah, his twitch more. stream talking about how he thought um uh, Ryan Johnson misunderstood the themes of Star Wars. Yeah. So I was like, but Shit, he doesn't man. do that anymore. I think he was just. I think he thought that that would just stay in there, so he was being himself. Probably this is what I think. And then it got clipped into oblivion, and then he probably just like now watches his mouth. I mean, doesn't, I, doesn't speak freely and, anymore. And he may That's not have normal, known how though. many more opportunities he might have had with Lucasfilm and everything. Yeah, yeah. Because I was going to say like that. That is kind of the annoying balance of it, right? Like if he wants more chances to have more creative power and control, then he probably does need to shit on Disney less. Yeah, he needs to shut his mouth for sure. Which I, sucks, but that's kind of how it works. Well, in terms of like more power control, he's a voice actor right now. He is exactly. Like, but yeah. you know, it can. It, you never know where people start, right? Like they they get a chance to, you Absolutely. know, like how um, uh, Andy Serkis he like directed some scenes of Lord of the Rings, right? Mm -hmm. so it like comes on as an actor and then it's like yeah i can help out with that i know how to do it and it's like oh shit and just you know that's yeah. and then he di he's directed he directed venom 2 right <laughs> yeah not saying that's a yeah. step up but you know no, it's it, just it's yeah right we, we all start somewhere right so it's like um you know he, he could be if there's a candidate that would be qualified to move up to that position in lucasfilm i think sam Whitwer would be the guy and like as a voice actor, you can influence the right in with if you're speaking to the director, I imagine, just like actors can. Yeah, of course. And if there was there was a, there was yeah. one time in particular where he even said, um, you know, this is the first time on Mortis. This is the first time that Anakin uh, or that that Padme meets Shmi, and it's like Sam was the one that piped up. He's like, no, they've met before in Episode One. That would have been like a huge mistake, man. Yeah, went ahead with that. Um, I think Palpatine's whole goal was to have Anakin surpass him in the ways of the dark side of the Sith tradition and teach him all that he knew to become an immortalized Sith Emperor in completion for the rule of two. I think so too, but what's also confusing is that he orchestrated the destruction of General Grievous and then turned him into a cyborg just to test the cyborgs out. So it's like, why? Like, why if he didn't think that, Anna, you know, and he could see into the future too, but um, yeah, it always made me wonder. Well, also they wanted a way to like have him under control, right? So by orchestrating the way that he gets in that and like killing his fucking family and all that shit, it gives yeah. him that like motivation and control over him to be whatever they want him to be. Yeah, in the future. What's up, boys? You know I had to pull up. Sad to see you go, Ryan. I took down your sandwich. Theory and Mahler, I need yours. I'll send you mine as well. Dude, awesome. I thought we did the sandwich question like first episode of Stargraft. Maybe second. He he always asks about the sandwich. <laughs> I gave mine last week and people were offended. <laughs> That's the most controversial thing I said on this podcast yet. True. 
Uh, we'll miss this weekly show, but it did put me onto Mahler and his long ass videos, which I love. And then on <laughs> Drinker through Mahler, Ryan's okay too. Hey, the alt Thank media you. pipeline. That's right. That's how we do it. Theory, I know you didn't like screws and bricks personally. I think we need more scenes where people screw bricks. Does anyone agree? Yeah or no? You mean screw bricks? Bricks. Hot the hot chick. Oh. I'm curious where she'll end up. She went through fucking hell. I, I thought that was quite an impressive, like, um, torture method. What was it like? You listen to the screams and deaths of like a particular species, which uh, has an, a certain like psychological effect. They said, and so they captured it for torture devices. I was like, that's unique. And uh, the actress did a pretty good job of showing like that was uh, it was like destroyed her. Felt very Star Warsy as a form of torture. That's true. I don't know, there are too many bricks and screws on the wall. I couldn't pay attention. Y'all <laughs> watch the Rebel Moon 2 trailer? If so, thoughts? It looks neat. So it is out then, is it? Apparently. Yeah, yeah watch. I'll watch that soon enough. Oh no, Mahler, don't start the wizard and sorcerer argument from Falcon and Winter Soldier again. We don't need you to go down this rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, we had like a 15 minute back and forth with some guests about the differences between a wizard and a sorcerer and what have you and stuff. It was funny. Would be great to see you guys collab with So Uncivilized, Off Screen, Nerd Rotic, Thor Skywalker, Def C S U, and OS of Star Wars videos. Okay, cool. Mahler, how much money will it take to for a face reveal on the last episode? <laughs> Ryan, any thoughts on creating dark horse review content? Always appreciate your insight on pre Disney material. I don't charge stuff like that. Also, my face is already out there. I streamed with it for years. <laughs> You can just Switch. search. You can just search Mauler face, and you'll find yep. it. It's up to you whether or not you'll be disappointed. They are always disappointed. Yeah, but, th <laughs> but thank you for the for the super chat, Corey. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Who's more powerful, Gandalf the White or Ahsoka the White? This one's for Ryan. Um, probably Ahsoka, because based <laughs> on what I've seen, probably Sabine. Like, she she will never die. Sabine, right? dude. Sabine, Sabine that's true. Anyone here heard or watched Berserk? <laughs> um, no, have not. I, I have not either. What do you think of the similarities between Aaron Yeager and Anakin Skywalker? Who do you like more? Who's Aaron Yeager? Aaron Yeager. Um, can I look it up? Yeah. Sure. Aaron Yeager. Is this some anime bullshit? It's some fucking anime bullshit. It's Attack on Titan guy. Oh, I don't know who that is. HP Theory Dumbledore versus Gary Gand. Gandalf. This. Oh. Are you guys going to watch a documentary series about the horrific allegations against Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider? I didn't know that exists. I heard of that. that. Um, I, but... I, I've heard of the um, documentary that's coming out. It's pretty, I mean, I've been talking about this shit and making jokes about Dan Snyder for years because it's basically like an open secret that like his assistant, who I think was Brian Peck, like went to jail for it and everything. And that Dan, the, Dan Snyder's been associated with some pretty horrific shit around Nickelodeon for the past couple decades. But yeah, there's a new documentary that's about some of the stuff that went on with Nickelodeon child stars. Is it, is it called Jesus. On the Air or Off the Air or something? Something like that. I don't know where you find it, but yeah, I've heard about it. I know Mariana's going to be happy that we're leaving. So shout out <laughs> to you, Mariana. She fucking yeah. hates me. <laughs> she does fucking hate me. And that's okay. Got my theory saber. Both the Anakin keeps so with the profi board. It's absolutely amazing. I'm glad you love it, man. I hope you're ready for the full site's launch. There's going to be... Uh, can't, you, you'll see. Hey, theory, yeah. you'll, you'll like this. I... Uh... My sister and her husband came over, and um, I like blacked out everything, and they didn't know I even had your lightsaber. <laughs> like, was, and I activated, it and the fucking she was like, "Oh, that's cool." And her husband was like, "Oh my fucking god, dude!" <laughs> 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 I was like, do you want to play with it? He's like, "Yes, yes, 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 yes." <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, nice. And he was so impressed, as should everybody be, with the fact that the sounds change based on like the speed that you move it in and the way yeah. you move it. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah, that's dope. I'm happy. Damn. Well, this guy got his wish. Never lose your <laughs> nerd. 
at least somebody's happy about it. Yeah, we were really just trying to make you guys happy. So. <laughs> yeah. Classic Collection Online is fixed. Gandalf is a lesser aner. Anus. I know. He was there to sing the song of creation that created Arda. Gandalf is the same kind of being as Sauron. I thought the, uh, the Balrog was like the same sort of thing as Gandalf, like a fallen version or something. I remember people saying that. I don't know enough about my Lord of the Rings lore. Is there one an angel there? There's, there's a few of them. I'm sure young Annie would be happy. Are you an angel? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> she's, just, she's just like, you're excited? <laughs> no? What? She's you're like zoning out. Yeah. What? Yeah. Why, why, would an angel, why would an angel come to this piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> Who wins the fight? Incredible Hulk or He-Man? Ma maybe he this is out. just addictive of how much I don't know about He-Man, but I feel like Hulk would fuck up He-Man. Yeah. Dumbledore, we see him do more magic than Gandalf does in the films. Look at it this way. Sauron and Gandalf are mayor, so they are equals, kind of. Yeah, dude, Gandalf never like impressed me. Like He never really did much. He just oh, appeared he in Gal white. Balrog, right? That was pretty cool. Yeah, but he died. <laughs> I mean, it's not an easy thing to do. But he fought yeah. for a really long time. Dumbledore yeah, died they, when they were falling. Too, they he got hit with time. the spooky green spell and fell off a cliff or whatever the fuck happened in that movie. So yeah, but he planned that. Yeah, he we'll lose he, it. He planned his own death, so that makes it cool. I don't think so. No, but it makes it acceptable. It's not yeah, like he, had, he didn't get defeated. It's not like, yeah, it's not like you got defeated. Gandalf was wasn't he... defeated as much as he was like, well, I'm going to go for sleep for a bit. Oh, shit, I died. <laughs> At the top of the, of the highest peak of the lowest dungeon or whatever. Because he, he Dumb... fucked that Balrog up, okay? Dumbledore is freaking cold as shit, man. He's basically just using Harry as a as a pig for slaughter. Mm. He's using him as bait. I, I think, like, the again, boss. we're talking about, like, very different wizards and very different, like, power levels. But in terms of like the amount of magic and how often we see it and shit like that, like obviously what we see is like a lot more from Dumbledore. But I think the level of power you're dealing with as Gandalf is probably he, fucking insane. Here's an interesting way I think we could uh, settle this. If we switch their roles, we put Dumbledore into Lord of the Rings and then Gandalf the White into Harry Potter. I think Dumbledore would be able to do more. And I think Gandalf I don't... the White would fail. Genuine question. Do you think Dumbledore could beat the Balrog? Yeah. But like, what do you see in the movies? The or at least maybe it's in the books, but he would he would transform his fire into like water or something. Just some shit. And or mm -hmm. like into ice and freeze his ass. Or he would uh geez, I don't know. Uh I don't know, maybe kill him with a spell. <laughs> well he's not, he's not no nah, Dumbledore wouldn't do that. I uh dark, dark I, Dumbledore it, could. Dark he wouldn't. He wouldn't. I, I might not know enough about Harry Potter. I just, I just, I've always assumed that something like the Balrog would probably beat Dumbledore. You think so? Yeah. Um, I, I've never seen the Wizards of Harry Potter as being like the at the level of fantasy that some of the creatures in Lord of the Rings get to in terms of power level, which is fine by the way. Everything. Well, scaled. you've only, uh, you've only watched the movies too, right? That's what I was referencing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we're, we are talking about different scale, 100%. Mm -hmm. But I do think that um, one of the things that I really hope we get to see in the Harry Potter series is um, the actual depiction of the book. So, like, the duel between Voldemort and Dumbledore. Um, there's a couple things that happen similarly, but there's a lot of things that are, like, completely different in terms of the way he acts, in terms of what he does, like... He basically transfigures and animates all of the different statues in there to protect him and Harry. So he's like statues running around Voldemort that like jump in front of death of killing curses for him and all this shit. And Dumbledore just the entire time's walking around cool as a fucking cucumber as he's basically butt fucking Tom Riddle. Um, <laughs> that sounds fun. It, it is pretty awesome. Hey, um, this is the the real question again. You might need to put a poll up for this because I don't know what the answer is, but. Savage Oppress versus Shadow the Hedgehog. Savage Oppress. <laughs> Savage. Watch the chat go wild. They're going to say Sonic. Uh, sorry, Shadow, I think. Because Shadow has a gun. <laughs> <laughs> K 
chaos control. Yeah, shadow all day long. Shadow. I have a feeling. Not enough Savage Opress fans. I mean, how, what's Shadow going to do against the Force, though, right? And, and Mr. Oppress. He would be dead. That. Yeah. Got to think about that. Or is it, can he be too fast? What if he's like real fast? Yeah, I didn't think about that. Shadow would yet. win. Kratos versus Dobby. <laughs> Kratos and Dobby. Bro, Dobby has like insane fucking powers. Are you kidding yeah, Dobby's me? Dobby's really powerful, actually. Like, yeah. How Kratos so just Kratos has died several times and he keeps going. Uh, how self magic is broken if they'd ever actually use it. But they don't because they're enslaved. I think they're the most powerful. Yeah, they have like no every fucking rule that like prevents a wizard from doing something doesn't apply to house elves. Uh, yeah. Which is why a creature was able to apparate in and out of Voldemort's cave. I'm just oh, saying, okay, this is a Star Wars channel, and people are saying shadow 60% to 40. So I think wow. we know what the answer is. Wow. It's only 330 votes. Shadow is dominating right now. Yeah. I heard uh I heard <laughs> Hayden Christensen's gonna voice Shadow the Hedgehog. That would be awesome. That'd be cool. I've heard that somebody kept spamming that in my chat one time. That's the only place I've heard that. So I don't know if it's real or not. It'd be awesome. Yo, chat, it's my birthday on Thursday. I'm trying to get to 20K on Theory Saber's Instagram. Can you guys go over there and follow? I mean, if you're interested in it, I'm not going to force you. No, do it or else I'll <laughs> just, just cancel dissolve. Star Grift. I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> cancel <laughs> Star Grift. <laughs> no, the boys are doing a good job with that. Uh, to Ryan, we know the Acolyte will be a effing woke piece of shit. No doubt. Hell, in fact, it'll be worse than all the Disney Plus shows ever made, like Ahsoka and Kenobi, but worse, I can't wait to see your review. Thank you. I appreciate that, Josh. I like the rainbow skull they had there. Yeah, he's like, gay dead laugh or something. <laughs> Thoughts on Jason Aaron's Star Wars comics? I really enjoyed the Vader series, Vader Down and Dr. Afra, but I stopped reading after the first few... TPBS. What's, what's TPBS? Anyways. Um, yeah, no, I think he makes good comics. Uh, I like Vader Down. It was cool. All I am surrounded by is fear and dead men. Did you like Dr. Afra? Not really. You like how she always smart enough to Vader? Yeah, I don't really like Dr. Afra. Yeah. I don't really even understand like what her point is. Representation. Some new character that came in. When I walked into my comic shop, he's like, we have the new Dr. Afro no uh, comic, and I'm like, I, I bet you horses? do. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. bet you do. Where's the Dark Horse section? Oh, it's over there. It's like in like cardboard little boxes, and I'm like sifting through them. I'm like, Whoa. Harry Potter's world building is beyond idiotic. Well, that's mean. Damn. I don't think so. Gandalf is an immortal angelic being from before time, same as Sauron, but just suppressed in human form. The weakest Gandalf beat the Barlog. The Barlog. Yeah. The Balrog. <laughs> he did, yeah, yeah. Barlog. <laughs> Gandalf could defeat Your Cory Debates Balrog. with fans would be cool. <laughs> debates about what? Star Wars? Probably. Debates about Star Wars versus Harry Potter. Strooled. Would you guys be down for some videos about, like, uh, you know, characters from different universes fighting each other? Like, you know, I, I really liked Kratos versus Dobby. I think that'd be cool. Be fun. <laughs> I want to be it, awesome. Though. I don't think anyone's ever done that before. No, no, I don't think anyone has. It's it's something I wanted to do a while ago with Josh. Uh, we never did, but essentially, it would be like Boba Fett versus Captain America, or you know, uh, some some shit like that. Mala, do you think there is any filler in Andor? Um, like scenes that I think there's just no value to them in terms of adding to character or stories in general. I usually think that about almost everything. Like there's something that I might cut, but sometimes I think that about things where I'm like, oh shit, I missed the that's actually interesting when thinking about this other thing. You know, so the answer is yes, but the even I would assume that without going over it again, that I might be just, you know, missing what the point of it was. I um I think I mentioned to you guys like it was on my rewatch that I realized like the first three episodes had a lot more going on in them than I first realized when I watched them. I was kind of like, 
because like the first whole episode sets up so much shit for the rest of the season while i was sort of watching it like when do we have more things happening why are we t- watching and or talk to like a bunch of random people yeah why is he talking to these random people at this fucking dog shit town and it's like okay all those random people kind of end up being important at the end of the day yeah yeah, yeah. his relationships with them yeah sometimes things that you think are filler in the moment in the episode end up coming around a couple i mean that's good writing if it comes up a couple episodes later and is actually important um but yeah angel Llama prop. Night King for five. Dumbledore. We see him do more magic than Gandalf does in the film. Look at it this way. Sauron and Gandalf are Maiar, so they are equals, kind of. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. Don't forget, Mahler, Harry Potter, has actual character development, unlike Frodo, who is just the hero. That was a did that come from an from, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's just the hero. Bit. Some people just completely miss like Frodo's story. They're just like he goes from you know, like like he doesn't really change. He just sort of goes like ah fuck it, I might keep the ring by the end. Like they don't really see a lot of what's happening. And and to be honest with you, I kind of it's part of what to celebrate about Lord of the Rings. A lot of it they don't spell it out to you, even though it's considered a very like format wise a classic story to sort of understand how to do writing and everything i am um, like you know the you can never go home stuff and how how frodo can't quite recover from the events of the the journey you can never be the man he's he never was. the same oh, yeah yeah and it, if he was just the hero he would have thrown in the fucking ring <laughs> what are you talking about? like i don't know yeah <laughs> which that. makes it way more interesting right we always make jokes about whether or not sam kept that in like his story of events that part or if he just goes no nah, no nah, frodo nailed it 100 percent. yeah and frodo's like, well, mr. Mm. mr frodo he just threw that ring right in there and i was just so damn proud i fucked him in the ass right after like <laughs> what we're talking about trust me red rising goes hard Hi, sam ct5555 never forget Not fives for the pain to come in the second half of the bad batch season are you ready Mueller? so ready I'm sure that on the next anniversary EFAP, some Star Wars thing you will be covered would be a great way for you to get onto EFAP theory. Anytime. Oh, yeah. There's potential. Like I said, I wouldn't mind covering those Apocrypha videos from Nid Anonymous with you. We could do that on EFAP as well. Sure. Ryan's love of the EU has inspired me to explore it myself. I've absolutely loved getting familiar with Ryan and Mahler and their takes. Thanks, boys. Thanks, cool. Star cool. Joker. Thank I appreciate that. I'm glad you're reading. These guys yeah. are the goats. Watched you all for years. Mahler, my favorite YouTuber ever. Any chance MCU can return to peak? Take care, lads. All the best. There's always a chance, but like as it stands right now, they for lack of a better term, design philosophy behind everything. It's just we got very little chance, but you know, it's a big juggernaut of a franchise, so I think it's not impossible we get some movies here and there that we all go, oh shit, that one wasn't cringe. You know, but as for it going back to the way it was at its peak, no, I don't I don't really think there's a chance of that. But maybe. No. You're not gonna do it just to buy an Asmund Gold pawn? I don't just know what that is. It. Is it a game? <laughs> it Dragon Zogma 2 is a game. Figured. Thoughts on a Tom Riddle show for the HBO Max during his time as a student. I'd love one. That'd be fucking awesome, but you would also have to have something. Um, you would also have to tie that into Dumbledore as well. Like there would be, it'd have to be more than like just Tom Riddle going through school. You would like need Dumbledore to like be doing important shit. Um, when is Grindelwald's defeat versus when Tom Riddle comes to school? Tom Riddle comes to school a couple of years before Grindelwald's defeat, right? Uh, I don't. I didn't watch Fantastic Beasts. It is well. 1945 was when Grindelwald was defeated, right? End of World War II, basically. Uh, when was Tom Riddle at Hogwarts? Yeah. So Tom Riddle was in. All right. So Tom Riddle was at Hogwarts from 1938 to 1945. Um, Grindelwald should have been defeated in like 1945, or at least in that time frame. So. 
that's what I, if I was going to do something like that, I would work those two things in. I would work the line with Dumbledore um, being eventually drawn in that battle and Tom Riddle at school. That would work. Can't wait for the accolade stream with you guys. Bring Star Wars Theory or Ryan to EFAP. I think in an I think an event Star Wars Grift stream for the new Star Wars live action reactions would be best. In my opinion, it's better to space out streams kind of like large event. I know it's been a while, but Ryan has <laughs> been to EFAP before. <laughs> He's uh, it, it was, was a long time, time ago. It, it was. was it was before the release of Rise of Skywalker, in fact. Those were some funny leaks. <laughs> yeah. Most yeah, were true. Were. It was all true. Some of it just got deleted. Yeah. Like the Eye of Webbish Bog, whatever the fuck that thing was. Mm -hmm. Like that was real. It just, you know, didn't make the final cut of the film. Somebody said Dumbledore slurping on Harry's juice. <laughs> Acting <laughs> he hasn't fantasized about it. What the fuck, Christian? That's out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man love the show followed you guys for years watch a load of streams and this one became my favorite all the best for the future off topic have you seen Jujutsu Kaisen and Edge Runners both effing awesome no but also thank you appreciate it watch the new Rebel Moon trailer it's already out we shall thank you for being a member for a year I feel thin, sort of stretched like butter scraped over too much bread. Mololongans. What did you boys think of Rings of Power? I didn't watch it. Oh, God. I thought it was a nightmare. <laughs> watched the first episode and I was kind of not interested. Imagining a puppet-style raunchy scene featuring Yoda and Yadel filmed in the way they did with Team America with the voices and everything would probably be <laughs> have me blow up my lungs. Laugh. That's why they got the intimacy coordinator for this show, guys. Yes. It's all connecting. I'm telling you. Oh, Acolyte, that's the show? That yeah, hopefully. Oh, okay. For intimacy coordinator, it's Acolyte. Probably gonna be nice. a lot of scissoring. No Ray has a bush. All right. What confuses Probably. me in the movies is that the Witch King breaks Gandalf's staff. How in the world does that happen? It can't happen. He is only a wraith. Interestingly, when that part came up on the Eve that we did recently, uh, we were asking some questions about it. I think Gary was saying like that's definitely a big change from the books, and that many people in chat who are like big into Lord of the Rings were like that's one of the biggest things they didn't like from the movies was uh, the Witch King defeating Gandalf, sort of. Like that doesn't match their expectation of the power levels in terms of who's capable of what. Like I think if you ask anyone who's read the books, they would say Gandalf beats Witch King. But uh, Ryan might know more about that than me. I don't know. Hey guys, love listening to this while I work late at night. So I'm going to leave myself a note. Remember to ask James about the yellow issue. There you go. Follow up with James. You also do live react to the seals are good prequel meme as part of the last episode. Any of you listen to Coheed and read their graphic novel run? No, I did not. Like Coheed and Cambria? No. Nope. Thank you, Corey. I like that you, you know, dress nice for your profile picture. Yeah. Got a nice shirt on with a sweater over it. Looking like slick. Like ready for a Christmas party or something. Oh, yeah. Going on a wholesome date where they discuss the news. Yeah, it looks like you're going to grab coffee with a nice Mormon girl. Respectable, presentable, unlike me. Mm -hmm. Mahler always looks like shit. Yep. That's why he's off camera. <laughs> Out these two trilogies, which did you like more, Lord of the Rings or the OG three Star Wars movies? I love Star Wars, but Lord of the Rings. Uh, Lord of the Rings care, is fucking brilliant. I care more about Star Wars than I do about Lord of the Rings. Um, <sighs> you're going to ask me which three are like more well-made or whatever. I think I would probably like give that to Lord of the Rings. But in terms of what I like more and what I care about more, what means more to me, it'd be the OG Star Wars movies. I agree. How's your eye doing a bit better? Thanks, man. Yeah, I did a little update on Instagram. Uh, Hopefully, she'll be all right. 
Could we chat more about Vader 2? I'm curious to hear the boys and what they think of what they're looking forward to. Do they know the premise? Yeah, everyone, everyone knows the premise. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a massive project. It's... Uh, uh, How long is it going to be, you think? 30 minutes. That's long. Yeah, and then episode three will also be 30 minutes. Cool. Um, so, yeah. It's a big project. It's coming together. It's working working on it every day. Everyone's working on it every day. Every day. For the Americans, no offense, but for the geeks and gamers, what's your thoughts on the DHS and FBI going after gamers? Change your opinions or go to federal prison as domestic extremists? Say what? They'll have to pry my PlayStation control out of my cold, dead fingers. Um, <laughs> but no, black. I mean, like there, there has been like a uh, a recent over the past couple of days, more stuff's come out about, oh, look, there's a bill they're trying to get enacted to uh, reduce the number of mean things that people say online while they're playing video games, all this bullshit. So I don't really think it has too much teeth yet. We'll see what happens over the next. There is like fucking trash journalists pushing it and everything, but I don't know how much uh, motion or like uh, momentum it actually has. Get yeah, metal commander. Uh, just be careful. Charlie's even more space than Ryan. I don't. Don't not familiar it's Charlie. with Charlie. Metal commander's chair on his stream. Put oh. little googly eyes on it. It's a, it's a good guest. There you go. <laughs> In theory, That's a lot of chair related opinions. Guest and lol cow live or get wings. Man, you guys are hitting some people. I don't know. We want Wings of Redemption on your Star Wars stream. Hell yeah. Okay, Star Wars Electrolytes no is a group of women and a transgender gender Wookiee drinking Gatorade. <laughs> That's so stupid. Star Wars Electrolytes. <laughs> Mulu, please tell theory about the evil known as Diabo Diabito. Diabito. Well, that's you. You probably heard of Movie Bob, right? At some point, theory. Movie, movie Blob. Nope. Cinema Robert. Cinema Roberto. Nope. He's um. He's just a very famous lol cow on the internet. He reviews films. Uh, we covered him on the latest EFAP, and he basically, he's. He, it was twelve years ago. He's asked to review Halo, and he's like, "Fine, I'll review Halo for my fans. Here I go." And it's like a four-minute video because one minute of it is intro, and he just says, "Have you ever noticed how?" In Halo, the good guys, quote unquote, are this uniform, like militaristic, oppressive, fascistic sort of UNSC versus the very diverse and colorful Covenant. And then he basically argues that like the Covenant are actually maybe the good guys, and that it's it's kind of gross that Halo frames them as the bad guys and stuff. It was uh, it was wild. I recommend checking it out. It was um, he he has a lot of takes, a lot of very interesting takes. Ryan, you down a bang? Oh, he'd say yes. I've had this book called Legacy of the Jedi number one since I was a kid, but haven't read it yet. I don't know why. Have any of you heard of it? If so, is it worth the read? Thanks, guys. Love the show and love y'all. Love you too, man. Um, I have not heard of it. I'm afraid. Legacy of the Jedi number one. I don't think so. I'm going to wait for Ryan to <laughs> come back from the ether. Battlefront 1 single player is a 10 out of 10. Smaller love... is the butter Please. scraped over too much bread. It is indeed. You don't want to scrape the butter over too much bread. Thanks for making me look forward to Mondays. Mr. Ryan's stream over the weekend, or did you take it off? Mr. Ryan's stream over the weekend. I like how Ryan leaves, and then we get two questions that are like Ryan. specifically useful. <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> Mauler, great comms on shit I don't even care for, including douche Star Wars and also now a theory watcher. Oh, right on. Great comms on shit I don't care about. Do they mean great... Comments? Comments, maybe, yeah. All right, sure. Cool. Sorry, I went, went to get a drink. I heard there was questions from me. Um, there you go. Legacy of the Jedi, number one. Uh, Legacy of the Jedi was... Uh, it was like a young adult or like kids fucking book that was it kind of went over. I think it was Yoda and Dooku, Dooku and Qui-Gon, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan and Anakin, kind of like little stories like from all of them. I don't I don't remember the gist or the meat of the story, but 
like a young adult one from what i remember yo it's shy guy what's up dude if we're talking money then perhaps i could help hope y'all are doing well i mean what do they mean they're talking about in terms of like keeping me to the show like that really not about money don't worry about it yeah it's not because we're going broke guys it's not what's happening Um, I listened to the Heir to the Empire audiobook and didn't really like it. After, yeah, uh, the freaking Wookie stuff, man, drove me nuts. <laughs> that that is a little bit strange, yeah. But um, if you didn't like the first one, I'm not gonna sit there and tell you like, if you really just didn't enjoy it, then I wouldn't read the next ones. Missed my ten dollars. Pretty sure we got it by now. I think they're giving refunds for Battlefront Classic. I got my 33 bucks back today. I even wrote a positive comment on the stream about it. Did you ask for a refund? Hmm. It's weird. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised that they're giving out refunds, especially with the controversy. Uh, well, I wouldn't be surprised either, but if you didn't ask for one and they give you one, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, that would be crazy. <laughs> Have you ever seen Hobbs and Shaw? No. I have. I'm not a huge fan of Star Wars, but love watching and listening to you and Mahler chat every Monday while I work. Thanks for the content. No problem. Guess I can get fucked, Danny. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Your guy now, okay? Oh, That's right. man. Jeez. Obi-Wan destroyed Vader's respirator with a hilt strike in the Reva show, going to miss the show. Yeah, yeah that's not wrong. He did a bit. Jackalite is shaping up to be Star Wars equivalent of True Detective Season 4. A theory, longtime fan off topic. What I would want in a Star Wars story would be Quinlan Boss movie. Just straight action and hunting and fighting from the Empire until he runs into Kenobi. Yeah, I could get behind that. I feel like they. Mentioned him in the Obi Wan show, so you know, waiting to see where that tails off. They dropped a lot of Easter eggs in that as well. They sure did, like with Corin Horn's name or uh, Hal Horn and everything like that. Sorry, Valen Horn. So, yeah, I don't know. I, sometimes I wonder, and I think, well, I do one hundred percent think we look too much into stuff because I think we assume that these people are operating at like a super high intellectual level, and usually they're not. That's like why we make up these ideas of who could Morak be and like who, and it ends up being like the most uninteresting thing possible. I will I say, in defense of that nature, like if we, we knew nothing about Star Wars, that was the first thing that was released. It was just called Ahsoka, new IP, brand new. And then they had that guy be like, I wonder what's the deal with that guy? And he just dies and he's a fart cloud. That would still be strange. You'd be like, oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. But like when it comes to, oh, look at these things that are written in Orabesh in the background of a wall. Sometimes I wonder yeah. if anybody associated with the show is like actually like trying to make a connection or whether it's just some people that are trying to do some cool Easter eggs that people find. You know what I mean? No, yeah, I get you. Well, yeah. it, it happens with Marvel as well. They'll, people be like, all the Mephisto speculation yeah. that happened through all of phase four and five, and it's just zero. And I think the one of the creatives was like, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> Fuck me. Yes, it's true. One thing I won't miss is Theory not reading all the Super Chats because they offend his delicate little fifis. I will continue to follow the others. By all means, man. Yeah, I read every single Super Chat. If there's one that's inappropriate, uh, I have the right to choose to not read yeah, it because it... you pay me a few dollars. It doesn't mean I have to read everything that you write if it's something that's absolutely ridiculous or rude or... Uh, I think weird. it's fair. To, uh, well, some of it you got to be careful because of TOS, and then clips. You know, you just got to be. Gotta There's watch clips. There, it, it's terms of service or stuff you can or can't have on the screen uh, as a YouTuber. But I don't need you to know that. Uh, it's at the discretion of all of us to either read or not read something. Right? We we're not beholden if uh, you know you you pay for us to read it uh, if it's rude or um, what goes against the terms of service of YouTube. But hey, yeah, by all means, go follow the boys. They're great. And I tend to cry if I get made fun of too much on the stream. So theories protecting me. Yeah. Sometimes. We made that deal. We didn't exactly. want to upset Ryan. Yes. Yeah. But uh, no, we literally sit here for hours until we go through 
every single one. I'll show you guys actually what it actually looks like on my end. We have 248 super chats so far today. Hmm. How do you so have that? I don't even have that information. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. In it, StreamYard, you do. The starred yeah. number, the starred so you, chats. So you oh. got starred. And then you got here, which is like the regular comments. So we oh, just cool. go. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, we that's just how go through I, them. Yeah, that's how I read them the way I do sometimes, Mahler. So for I example, was, I right meant now, to ask you about that because I had no idea how you're doing it. I'm just, a, I just remember them when they come in. Your I was going to say, was, you could have sold that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish this. Your comment was 3.52 p.m. It is now 4.39 p.m. Um, and then the next one. So we just go in order. And that's it. Ben Shapiro, made, says huh? ben Shapiro made up his own list of sci-fi and sci-fantasy trilogy IPs. Star Wars and Lord of the Rings made the final cut. His conclusion was Lord of the Rings was overall better, but he loved Star Wars more. Hey, that's kind of what I said too. Ben Shapiro stole my take. Wow. Son of a bitch. How dare he? I'm going to start stealing his style. Wear that little hat. Sweet. I think it'll look good on you. I think so too. Get We're getting the hair. Falcons back. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh yeah, BB. I've been busy at work for a while. Missed some Star Wars theory lore. I was trying to search up why Josh wasn't coming back to nerd theory, and I found a video of him defending you over some internet drama acting like he hardly knew you. Yeah, I saw that. It was, it was over the misogyny thing, and I, uh, I saw the video, and it, it was... Yeah. You know? Who is he defending you? This was a while ago. This was uh like in January or something like that. Nice. That's a big ass fucking catfish. It sure is. Yeah. What will happen with my Stargrift stuffy pre order I placed? You never placed any pre order. <laughs> I don't think that I don't think that happened. We didn't release it. <laughs> Just joined the stream. Just when I began to join the Grift, it ends. What are the plans? Would love to say hello for one stream one day. Well, the boys will be back for major things, like the ends of seasons and stuff. And we got one next week. Yep. We got, we got, yeah, we got, we one got another week. one last week or next week. Yeah, yeah. We'll probably do one uh, at the end of Acolyte. It's up to the boys if they want to do one for the end of Bad Batch. Um, yeah. I mean, we, I mean... We should make it. We should make it go fund me. Be like, keep the boys on, raise like a million dollars. <laughs> Can you imagine? I mean, we got three thousand people here. If each one donates ten bucks, what is that? Thirty grand. That's a lot of money. That's a considerable amount. That's a lot of money. Just to keep the boys on, yeah. It's a decent amount. If everyone donates a hundred bucks, that's uh three hundred thousand. It's power numbers. What was it like Eric did one point two million in sales or whatever with fourteen thousand orders? I mean think of it, fourteen thousand people. It's shit. That's it. Fourteen thousand to generate one point two. I mean that's what I'm Imagine been they donated a million each. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be three yeah. billion or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Imagine if Darth Maul came back and then donated a million credits. <laughs> he would fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. He was misogynist that time. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Wait. Fuck. The shroud of the dark side has fallen. And then you just see. And then Grogu is born. Was that the sound of Ryan and Salacious B. Crumb? That's the sound, yeah. That was the sound of Yoda and Yaddle. Uh. I'm thinking about doing a video that goes over the history of EFAP and its villains, like Diabito. Um, okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's got to be EFAP law experts at this point. I feel like there's fans of EFAP who know EFAP's law way better than the cast. God, They're I a long and storied history. I can't stop thinking about Yoda fucking Yaddle now. Of course. And like, Yaddle, who just sounds like a normal ass person talking as Bryce Dallas Howard, like from Tales of the Jedi, but with Yoda, <laughs> just like 
mm, mm. Come in your ass, I will. <laughs> like, Fuck! God damn it! I mean? Like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, these shits get clipped and then they're like oh my god theory's there oh no you he's looked, a, whatever you looked really offended so you did your fuck, job man. well i feel I, like I, right i feel like you drop the voice of actually you just be like i want to fuck you <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah like that's where we actually find that the entire thing's an act by yoda yeah. and like his when his fucking horniness takes over <laughs> yeah <laughs> He just sounds like a normal ass dude. <laughs> what do you mean? Like he loses his whole voice and everything? He's just like Yeah, he doesn't do the voice, doesn't do the flip flop like dialogue. He's just like I'm gonna fuck you right in your ass. <laughs> Yaddle's like, what the fuck? And he's like, Yeah. He's like, yeah, I've been faking it, bitch, but you can't fake this. And no one's gonna fucking believe you. <laughs> oh no. He's like <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not using protection. We're gonna make a goddamn baby, <laughs> little baby Yoda, <laughs> little baby Grogu. I can't watch anymore. <laughs> I tune in to Acolyte for that. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, why not? I'm in book five of NJO. When does Mister Katarn appear? Book Kyle seven. sprinkled in throughout. Um. He's sprinkled in throughout NJO. He doesn't have too many big storylines that I can remember in it, though. Um, hmm. uh, he gets a pretty big storyline in the next big series after, which is uh, Legacy of the Force. But I, Kyle Katarn is one of the most underutilized characters in the EU. Um, him and Kip Duran, both of them. Gonna miss Stargriff to get Tony Gilroy and Timothy Zahn or George Lucas to replace Ryan and Mahler. Yeah, you know, maybe I'll, I'll reach out to them. Yeah, they said maybe, right? So it could happen. Yeah. What we miss most about Star Stargriff? Uh, boys that what I like to two? work with. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll I still talk to them, but it just won't be as much, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't like letting the chat down. I know the chat likes it, you know. Yeah, yeah I saw, uh, I think it was a, a post or something today being like, Stargrift saved my life. Or something. Oh no! Well, Val, at least we bought you a couple extra weeks. <laughs> Thank God, dude. What? Just saying. Oh, fuck. Ryan's a liability at this point. <laughs> the show oh, is gonna stop where, one way or another. Where, where am I with the fucking? I'm in the fucking astronaut thing with the gun. Always have been. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gift indeed. Grift. <laughs> somebody said, somebody said, Yoda, size is not everything. One inch do I carry? <laughs> <laughs> One mile in the force. <laughs> God. Uh, posters obviously alluding to Sith Darksiders who bleed their lightsabers for that crimson color. Fucking idiots. I don't think it's alluding to that. <laughs> Which is also a retarded premise, by the way. Even, the, like, idea, the, the idea of uh, of lightsaber crystal bleeding is fucking stupid. Like that that entire thing that they've fucking decided to go with in Disney canon is fucking retarded and gay. Um, and I don't think a lot of people actually know about that, so I kind of doubt that's what it's referencing. But and you need to me. appreciate there are so many people like me who hear that and don't know if it's parody or not. When you say like fucking loser, you don't even know that, that relates to Sith bleeding the dark side lightsabers. It's just literally like, what? what are we talking about? <laughs> like, what? Yeah, like it's no one actually, has any idea. Yeah. You know what? I actually think it's kind of dope. They can take a crystal and then you turn evil and you put all your darkness and hatred <laughs> into the crystal and it freaking like cracks and bleeds and turns red. It's kind of dope. Versus the other way, what was synthetic? You put it in a furnace and then you like. You, Sith don't meditate, so what, you harness your dark side of energy outside of the freaking furnace, and then you have these crystals now? I mean, well, that's kind of fucking cool, too, I guess. Where'd this get introduced? The Clone Wars? No, no, no. This no, got no. no, no. After this is Disney. Disney. Over, this it is was, Disney shit. Um, Rebels? No, no, no. After all that. It, 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 it's in, like, the... Um, it's in the comic, the Vader comic. It's in, it's in the comic book and the expanded materials where it was, like, introduced, and then even... That even explains how Ahsoka got her white sabers, right? Because she, yeah, she took purified the, because them. Because she took because Ahsoka's the only uh, fucking one who can do it, of course, right? She took a crystal and basically like purified it out of an Inquisitor's saber, right? Okay. 
Like she yeah. basically just de demolishes. How do we? How do we? How do we explain Mace Windu's then? What did he do to his? He he is the essentially well. So in Legends, he got. Let his... a man touch his penis and turn purple. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> let a man touch your crystal, turns purple. There you go, pal. Um, so this is actually one of my favorite comics that I made. Throwing all of his hatred, betrayal, fear, sorrow, and everything broken within the boy who dreamed of becoming a Jedi. As lightning crackled from the fiery smacks above and lava swirled around him like the pain within his black soul, he let out a scream as if he were being born a thousand times. And then his red crystal was made. Instruction continues apace, Your Excellency. I believe we will meet. So... That's how you bleed a crystal. <laughs> mm. uh, essentially, just pour all your rage into it. Yeah. You let it be your therapist. Yeah. There you go. Do so, you like the other way? With if someone like, takes the lightsaber from you, does that change anything about your connection to your bled thing? You know what I mean? Like that, That's not what I mean. It introduces like so many different things about What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, like you, you're saying you poured like part of yourself into the lightsaber, and then if someone takes it off you, is that are they now like holding a part of you in the lightsaber, sort of? No, it's not like a Horcrux. It's like you basically you have all of this hatred and emotion, and you just like send that through in the Force as an as energy into the crystal, and so the crystal kind of like Bluetooth syncs with you, and now bleeds red. Whereas the other way was you put crystals, synthetic crystals, into a kiln, um, blast the heat, and then you sit outside of it and you just like pour dark side energy into it, and then it's like cooked and done, and then it's red. So. Or Ahsoka can just put her hands on it and, and all the corruption it. leaves it. You literally do the opposite. Y yeah, exactly. Um,. That's what it is now. All right. I guess. True, man. I guess so. Here we go. Force Gump, objectively good. Uh, Didn't someone ask us about Forrest Gump last time? I think so. Mm -hmm. I could have sworn. Um, yeah, I like Forrest Gump. Ring? I like Forrest Gump too. What are your thoughts on Elden Ring? It's pretty neat. Uh, it's, it's Freaking awesome. Yeah, I played like 10 or 15 hours, but I didn't get like two into the game. But what I did play was really good. It's not my favorite from From Software, but it's certainly a step in a direction I thought they would eventually try to take. A bit more open world for the Souls format. A little bit more forgiving and option based so you don't have to fucking just get your ass kicked over and over again by the same person. To an extent, Souls fans would argue that all of them have that, depending on how well you know them. But I think I agree with that. The Elden Ring is the easiest to sort of find ways to compensate if you don't know quite how to deal with certain bad guys and stuff. Yeah. Got pretty hard there in the end. But I still haven't finished it. Said. No, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, on break at work, catching up. Why the split? Um... I smell bad. Just, just time stuff. And obviously, well, Terry does smell really bad, even from across the screen. It is yeah. the smell, but it's also it just just scroll back. <laughs> it's in the first like 10 minutes. It's all there. Instead of like, because we can just spend this more time talking about other things yeah. instead of repeating Th it. Thanks, Ironside. Yeah. Here we go. Force Gump trailer. Good. Force Awakens was hor horrible. I always imagined Luke Skywalker would have statues throughout the galaxy after the war, but now nah, he's a myth. Han and Leia broke up. The rebels had old, beat up ships. Like, the pre yeah, it was shit. Mm-hmm. The resistance. Ugh. Boo. All my theories say we're both... Oh, I read this one. Thanks, Vex. Hope you're excited for the site launch, man. Mahler, I still remember your reaction to the edgy trooper coming up to Mando and punching him in the head like you're a wah-wah bewilderment. That would have been the season two finale? Oh, the... Yeah, when he punched Mando through the ship in his helmet. 
yeah, I mean, I don't know how you guys reacted to all that, but we thought it was fucking insane and hilarious that whole you, season. You talking about when he was getting punched in the head and like hitting him against like the bulkhead of the the yeah. wall? Um, yeah, like I don't care how much um, I don't care how much like padding or whatever you have in your fucking helmet, your head is still gonna be fucking moving. Did you know what I mean? That would cause significant damage. Dude, that fucking dumbass robot kept throwing him around. He could easily have killed him that whole scene. It was annoying as hell. But uh, it's not the only thing that does that. Like, I think I referenced Terminator uh, uh, Salvation does that a lot. Like, Terminators just throw people. It's fucking dumb machines. Just crush their ankles and they're already pretty much screwed. Uh, yes, I have seen that. That's by Mike Starwalker, and he's one of my friends. He's also going to be an ambassador for Theory Savers. D does an amazing job. What's up, Ob o Ob One? Can blow me. <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest criticism that you can levy against your favorite Star Wars film or piece of media? Biggest criticism um... that you can levy against your favorite Star Wars film. Biggest criticism um, that Anakin's turn uh, didn't make sense. Yeah, that'd probably be mine, actually. <laughs> well, I, I, I think it did. I, I, we didn't have enough time for it. For I think for a lot of people watching, they didn't feel like there was enough time to see it happen and play out. Um, well, one of the big ones for me is I don't buy the part with the younglings. I just don't. I refuse to. Uh, everything I know about Anakin, I don't believe he would have done that. Um, what if I were to tell you all those kids are actually annoying little shits? <laughs> and they grew up to be little Star Wars Hitlers. So he, <laughs> he got them all before it could possibly happen. I, uh, it's, it's too much. I think that uh, the way I would try and fix it probably would have been that you have him outside and the clones find them. And he's like, you know, they ask for the orders and he sort of walks away and you just hear like the, the shots carried out or something. Something that d disconnects him a little bit more. Having him strike children down with a lightsaber, I was just like, nah, I'm sorry, you've lost me. And if someone brings up uh, killing the children Tusken Raiders, I'm not sure about that either. Yeah, like, they're uh... animals. <laughs> okay. What? I buy uh, killing the ones that, like, organized Shami's, you know, capture and death and stuff, but... You know, when that's like a trope. You come across the children of the enemies... And you kill them, it's like, damn, all right. But he was really angry. I never even thought about them having him, uh, you like use the clones to do it. Like, they're like, they like open up a door and it's just a bunch of fucking younglings standing there. And, <laughs> and like, one of the clones turns to me, he's like, Sir, he's like, <laughs> You have your orders, and like turns his back. And marches down the hallway as we basically just see like out of focus clones blasting into the fucking room. That, that would have been a way to like accomplish. I think that. it would have been really effective yeah. if he walks in, sees them himself, and he sort of walks out, and you're like, "Oh, Anakin's going to spare them," and then you see the clones are sent in, fucking and we don't we don't even need to see what happens just to know it'd be like, "Oh fuck, that's how far he's gone." I would have way preferred that than him doing it himself. I just uh, it went over the top for me. Do, 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 do. Waller can now co-host another podcast called Metal's Forge by kicking out metal. <laughs> Join a podcast and kick out the host of it. And if not a Mary Sue, at least willing to concede he's got savant syndrome portrayed very conveniently. Was there you like know? a super chat before that? Or is he just talking about Mahler? No, he's talking about Mahler. Oh. Sad to see the show end. Love all three of you. Thank back. you. Yeah, Dumbledore over Gandalf. Gandalf is crazy powerful, but Dumbledore, if he wanted to, could just use the death spell. Yeah, but Dumbledore wouldn't, though. That's a problem with that but argument. If he wanted to, you do have to consider character when you do these matchups. Yeah. No, because remember, even in the, even in Sorcerer's Stone, it's like is when they establish it, and he's like, you know, Voldemort has powers that I would never dream of. And McGonagall's like, only because you're like too, it's only because you're too honorable to use them or whatever, right? Like even they set that up in Source of Stone that there's some things that Dumbledore will not do just because of the what he set out in his mind. There's some spells think, he's not going to use, some magic that he's not going to pursue. You don't think he'd use the unforgivable curses ever? 
I think that there's a chance that he did use an unforgivable curse during his duel with Grindelwald and Aberforth, which ended up killing his sister. And I think that is such a big turning point in his life. It's when he um, thinks different. To never it, it's when he decided that what him and Grindelwald were talking about in terms of for the greater good and taking over the muggles and everything, that that was not the way he wanted to live his life. I think that that moment in time was a, a changing point for Dumbledore as a person. Um, um, so... No, I, I don't think he would. You know what I always wondered? Why don't they just throw a Bogart at their enemy? <laughs> because it's really easy to just say ridiculous. But they don't know that. Mm. But it, so here's what I'll say. Um, even though Bogarts can like replicate them, there's always going to be things like in the maze in Goblet of Fire when Harry thinks that he just got up against a full blown Dementor, fucking Expecto Patronum buck and the stag goes and the dementor trips and he's like that's not a fucking real dementor what the fuck and immediately recognizes the bogger so i would say that most wizards even when surprised would eventually be able to like you know suss out that that's a bogger yes i suppose sus suss it hey. out <laughs> thanks dom what's up dom thanks flathead dobby is getting goomba stomped <laughs> dobby's a free elf uh, my views more or less align with you, Theory, and I love Doc Afra. Give her first comic run a chance. You'll enjoy it. Now, I've read them in the past. I didn't... I don't think I really got into them too much. Um, I think I just wanted to see more Vader. That, that was... I was just like, eh, I don't really care about this. Somebody asked, what would Gandalf's Boggart be? It's a good question. Yeah. It's actually a really good question. Instead of dead Frodo. Maybe his biggest fear would be to see him if he ever put on the ring. Maybe. Guess all right, so guess who refused to to put on a ring and guess who did when they shouldn't have? Gandalf refused to put on the ring and even distanced himself from it for specifically that reason. Yeah. Dumbledore, in his moment of weakness, put on the ring. For the hopes of seeing his sister well, see, again. That's actually a good point as well. Because if someone said like. What if Gandalf with the ring. Would he be able to beat Dumbledore. And it's like yeah. But he wouldn't put on the ring. I guess if we forced the ring on him. Ah, so Not I have an answer ring. from Harry Potter theory right now. Um, what it boils down to is this. Wizards and Harry Potter are basically just advanced humans. That can wield magic. Whereas wizards in Lord of the Rings like Gandalf are mayor which are essentially divine beings that embody magic itself. A better comparison is wizards in Harry Potter versus elves in Lord of the Rings who also wield magic. Though, I'd give the edge to wizards in Harry Potter. I hate to say it, but Gandalf would destroy Dumbledore. Fuck. <laughs> You're just talking about basically a, a godlike being. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I guess. And also, Dumbledore's gay, so I don't know if that where where that advances him in your tipping point. It means he's gonna come for you. Potentially, you could distract him with a dick. You can't distract <laughs> Gandalf with a dick. So why not? You you have to put these things into perspective uh, when we're you getting could. this deep into these verses. So. Could you say the same for Voldemort then, with the opposite? I don't think v Voldemort cares about sex at all, which is why the cursed child is an abomination. Um, there's no way Voldemort had a baby with Bellatrix. V v Voldemort doesn't fucking love anything. He doesn't lust after anything. Except himself. Voldemort does not fuck. He doesn't even love himself. He kind of hates himself. Voldemort don't fuck. No. Dobby? Does Dobby fuck? Bro, I think Dobby was getting winky drunk on those butterbeers just to fucking slam, to be honest with you. <laughs> Not even kidding. <laughs> Why defend Dave when he's hurt? Star Wars on repeat. I like some of his choices. Not all of them. What's up, Brandon? Wait, was it? Wasn't there an Andal one? I could have sworn I saw Andal's name. I I'm summoned when an Andal. Oh was shit! Uh, I, sometimes I, I leave them up and then I skip them. Andor's entire story could be set in occupied France, and it still works perfectly. It's a French resistance show, and that's partly why I agree with theory. It wasn't quite Star Wars. It was a 1941 movie with a Star Wars skin. 
Um, I don't quite buy that anymore because Star Wars as a skin has been destroyed. People say like Mandalorian is Star Wars or it feels like Star Wars. People said TFA really felt like Star Wars. Like maybe I don't care about what feels like Star Wars. I want substance out of my Star Wars. And if that means losing lightsabers, losing Darth Vader, losing, you know, a lot of iconography that's familiar, but still maintaining plenty of references and it is coherent with the world I know to understand and still has music that I feel fits. Like, that's totally fine with me. I'm totally fine with brand new characters and uh, parts of the world being fleshed out that are far from what we're used to compared to the Obi-Wan Kenobi show where people be like, oh, this feels like Star Wars because we got Obi-Wan Kenobi and McGregor, yeah, and then it fucking destroys everything. It's like, uh, it feeling like Star Wars to me is such a down-the-lane problem compared to what we have to deal with right now in terms of fixing everything. Thank you, Brandon. Theory clarify to clarify Disney Star Wars is what I call Disney Star Wars. Wait, Dick Star Wars? <laughs> Douche okay. Star Wars. Dick Star Wars. Yeah. Ryan, I need your help. Qui Gon has been my favorite Jedi for over twenty years, but I know so little about him. Any books that expand on his character better? There's a lot of like young adult books. The Jedi Apprentice books are fucking amazing. That's about him and Obi Wan's relationship from starting from the time when Obi Wan's about thirteen. Um, in terms of that, there's not a ton. Um, there, there there's not a ton of shit like before Qui Gon was Obi Wan's master. Cloak of Deception is a book that was set in Clone Wars era. Uh, I think that is. Bef it's bo sorry, not in Clone Wars era. It's before Phantom Menace in the prequel era. Cloak of Deception, I guess, um, has a little bit of Qui Gon in it. But my best recommendation would be actually be those young adult or junior novels, whatever you want to call them, Jedi Apprentice. Star Wars Theory just found the Once Upon a Theory series with Vader and Luke time jumping. Any more of that series coming? That series is extremely expensive. Uh, I would love to make more. However, right now, all my money is going into Vader Episode 2. And uh, any money that I do make is from Theory Sabers, uh, which goes right back into up paying for uh the site and products and everything we're doing there as well as um vader so unfortunately i don't have any funds right now to be spreading anywhere else saying no to joining the dark side or using the ring what's tougher who had a greater task luke or frodo I, probably the That's, ring is tougher um... i'd say I'd be inclined to say the ring, but at the same time, this is just down to each person, right? Like some would argue a great trait of Sam is his resilience to the ring. But in some ways, one could argue that Boromir to resist the ring is much more difficult than it is for Sam. Therefore, it's like a harder burden. You know what I mean? Like it's not even dependent on the ring at that point. It's dependent on the person themselves as to what's harder. So is it harder for Sam to resist the ring or for... Darth Maul to resist the influence of the dark side. It's like, well, we know the answer to that, I guess, because Darth Maul is not interested in resisting it at all. So, like I said, really down to the person, but considering the ring is like designed to corrupt, it's supposed to get in your like psyche and fuck with you, yeah. versus the dark side being an offer for power that I think is more allegorical for us all dealing with that in our day to day lives. Just, you know, we can take that path at any moment in a, in a sense. Yeah. I feel like the ring is more difficult but i guess it really is down to the person from my understanding i feel like the ring literally calls to you and like puts you in some sort of a trance where you're like oh whereas the dark side is just um it kind of depends on you know i'm i i think i feel like uh, jar jar would have a uh better time refraining from the dark side compared to anakin and jar jar would have a lot of difficulty resisting the ring Oh, dude, he, yeah, he'd be game. You'd go for it. it. He would just fucking go for it. He would rip yeah. it out of Frodo's hands. Yeah, that's why it's so interesting. It's like it, I feel like the ring works on the, the weak-minded, whereas the dark side works on those with more of a proclivity to be evil. Well, one could say those with grand aspirations, those who really want to make change happen, will be yeah. very interested in the dark side potentially. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's because really it. Cool. Like even um, when you talk about it, it's like a shortcut, right? It's like a shortcut to gain power is, and things yeah. like that. So if you have, if you're one of those people that does have big plans, 
probably are more susceptible. You're more ambush you're more ambitious and shit like that. It'll feed on that for sure, yeah. Oh, that's really cool, man. I'd love to make a video on that. That's actually fun. Like how that's... ambitious was Smeagol? Hmm. Not. I can't imagine. Like I don't really know what, what what is it mean even to be ambitious for a hobbit? They just like live fucking in their same fucking place, frolic. live in the Shire forever, don't do anything, get high occasionally, fucking eat a bunch. They don't do shit. They don't do Hobbit, hobbits literally have no ambition in their fucking lives. Yeah, they live a really good life, though. <laughs> you know, that's... Oh, yeah, hey, it's so chill. That's an awesome life. Freaking, oh, what am I going to do today? I don't know, maybe I'll go in the meadows and frolic. I want to see. I want to see a fan fiction if modern day social media gets introduced to the Shire and how quickly their entire society comes like crumbling, crumbling down. down it would be like you've got all the female hobbits just doing thirst traps on TikTok and starting OnlyFans and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what fanfic I want to see. Let's do it. It would be like hobbits like twerking and shit like outside exactly. their doors. Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Theory, did you hear about them going back to making Star Wars Rogue One Squad? I, yeah, I made a movie. Yeah, I, I made a video about it. <laughs> you made a whole movie about it. Damn. <laughs> short film. Short film. Love the show. Theory, hope the eye is all right. Were y'all fans of Ryan Johnson's work prior to Last Jedi? Promising nope. filmmaker that seemed to get wasted. Not really. No. I thought Lupa was hyper overrated. I thought it was fine. Um. And I didn't think it was great. I guess he did an episode or two of Breaking Bad. I mean, I like Breaking Bad, but I wasn't. Yeah, Ozzy Mandius is excellent, but it's not like it made me think like, "Oh, Ryan Johnson's the guy for Star Wars. This will work." No, especially when you're coming into something that has such a a built-in structure. Like yeah. when they're in the you know whatever season of that, they've they've got a way of doing things. Everybody understands. Whereas if and it would be different also. We got brought in just to direct it. But that wasn't the case. It's like he's in charge of everything. So it's a little different. This guy hopes your eyes are all right. Thanks, man. I hope so too. Uh damn, I'm late to the party. Can Darth Vader solo the army and at the gate at the black gate instead of Aragon? Lord of the Rings, Vader can also solo a rebel. Dude, I think Vader by himself would take out all of Middle Earth. Well, so this comparing Aragorn to Vader, like, yeah, Vader's more powerful than Aragorn, yes. Significantly <laughs> more powerful. All he has to do is this, just, like, send a force push and then take his lightsaber and just, like, literally, like, Yondu. And just go in circles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aragorn has a functional him. penis, though. Not a charred no, no. remnant of fucking... That ain't gonna help you in a fight. No, but it's cooler. <laughs> You know, if, it, if you have a dick not, that works. Not if you're dead. Mm. Vader can probably get some, like, cybernetic implant. I'd rather have a dick that works and dies and die early than fucking live long with no dick. What was Sonus Wave on a podcast? Uh, I, I'll be looking for someone else. It, it'll come when it comes. It may not be for a while. Who knows? All the nerdy talk on Mondays just sets me up for a good week. Love these boys and hit that like button, people. Thanks, Maria. Yeah, if you guys can hit like, that'd be awesome. Vex says, sequels done wrong on purpose. Truly angers me. Video games were done bad as well. Mediocre media needs to be cured. Seriously, what can be done? Um, hire competent writers, I suppose. Clean house. Yeah. New creatives. Intimacy coordinator is directing Grogu's conception. Yeah, probably. See? Mm -hmm. Thoughts on doing a make your own hilt customizer on Theory Savers? Uh, yeah, we have that coming. Sweet. Yeah, it'll be a one stop shop for everything, anything you could possibly want, and it'll be, yeah, you'll see. It'll be amazing. Would your tongue? Uh... I'd eat her out. I don't know if I'd lick her ass. So. Oh, I thought it said Rex. <laughs> I thought it was Ray. Well, but... Are there any <laughs> are there any references of the sequels in the live action shows? If so, what are they? Also, it makes sense why Boba and Kenobi sucked. Disney sucks. Um, yeah, either... it's all the cloning stuff, right? We're assuming that all leads to Palpatine's plans in the sequel. Yeah, like Operation Necromancer has literally been the entire basis of the series of Mandalorian. Yeah. Um, it, it, even beyond that, uh, 
the first season of Mando uh, okay. when they name drop. What's the casino planet's name? Um, Jamie? Cantobite. Cantobite. Yeah, it's like when they're doing the prison break episode and they name drop some shit on Canto Bite. It's like, okay, uh, they're intentionally using lore from the sequels to connect, you know. Um, that Those little things should have been the first indicators for anyone that had any hope in that grand conspiracy of it being retconned that you know, it was not going to happen. Because why would you go out of your way to make little connections like that if you're just going to retcon things? True. The answer is wouldn't i feel like you know someone who really lost a lot of potential was um benicio del toro's character oh yeah you, yeah great actor yep hey theory i watched your video decorating your theory savers room the picture of you uh with you and, and hayden did you put in a frame or use digital copy instead to put photo frame to keep safe no that's the actual one I put it in between my books as of right now because I'm figuring out where I'm going to actually put it. I don't know if I'll put it in that room, but I'm thinking I'm going to put all my pictures and signed photos probably like up there here in this office, which is really just another bedroom. Um, but we'll figure it out. How's your eye doing? Are Ryan Mahler not playing nice? No, exactly what's happening. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're leaving him high and dry. Um... And he smells. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really right. the root cause. You know, I geeked him. Yeah, I'd be down. Everyone throwing shade at Ryan. I love you, Ryan. We all love Ryan. Ryan's what makes the show... He's like the... Uh, I don't know. What's the third thing? The third thing? Yeah, in something where you like you add the third thing and it's like, you know, he's the he's the, the ketchup to my hot dog or the mustard to the relish. <laughs> I don't know. The glue that holds the whole thing together. I just think that Ryan's such a shiny, happy person. You've got to throw shade on him because you got to counterbalance. Yeah, I'm such a bright, shining star. Y'all got to try to throw some mud just so I look like a normal person. Mm -hmm. Bring my shine down. I get it. Next time, just bring sunglasses. Yeah. Hold the mud. I don't know. Thank you, though. I am Garrett. Oh, no. Whoever sent the Super Chat before. I am Garrett for five bucks. Says, Hold on. Theory, what was the makeup process like for your scene as Vader in episode one? That close up of Vader is fantastic, and the makeup work was insane. Uh, the makeup process was hours and hours of me being makeuped on. <laughs> makeuped uh, on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it was. Uh, so I was hearing the scene from uh, Vader, Padme, and young Anakin the whole time. And we were actually running late for the day. So we only had a few minutes to shoot my scene. I think maybe like 30 minutes left in total. So like I was like rushing, man. They, remember I got out of the room, the makeup room, put on the contacts like <laughs> like midway. And then uh, just hopped on, went on. That was it. And they were like, you know, setting up a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Gandalf could beat the bar log, yes, but could he lock balls? <laughs> that's the question. I didn't ask for a refund. Well, that's weird. That is weird. Does Ryan have eyebrows? No. I do. They're just really light. Nope. They're a myth. My terrible lighting doesn't help. Hey, Theory, last May in one of your streams with Josh, I told y'all that I had just put out my first song. Now I have five and about 55K streams. I want to say thanks for the inspiration. The Roth Brothers. That's awesome, dude. I'm really happy for you. Keep going. It shows you have a great audience and uh, it can turn into millions. Millions and millions of people you could reach. Be awesome. And thank you, of course, Ryan, too. That's right. Thank you, Danny. Yeah. I thought. To all, thoughts on the movie Fire in the Sky? Would love to see your opinions, reactions if you haven't seen it yet. Sad to see the Griff go. Fire in the Sky. Who's that with? Not, not seen it. Would you be up for having Melvin and Vaughn Room as guests? Sure. I have before. Movie Bob has another Halo video where he says Halo 4's release date is a Republican conspiracy theory to distract you what? distract youth from to get Mitt Romney in office. What? 
movie bomb is insane. So He's like so, all, so I was I had unplugged my headphones while I was walking over there listening to you talk about movie bob and uh <laughs> there, there's a game that I believe they invented. It's like quotes that they take and it's like was this movie bob or hitler? Yes. And it's and we we didn't do great at it. Like we couldn't tell. Yeah, the the some of the most deranged shit that that dude has said is is crazy. Well, and for reference, he once said uh Oh, fuck, was it Super Mario Brothers 3 was his personal Vietnam? <laughs> it's in his book. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. <sighs> Nobody wants to know. Figures, I design a thumbnail, and next week the grift is over. <laughs> you did it! You did it, Mo! <laughs> it was, yeah, it was you, man. We were looking at it. The way I was depicted as Paul Atreides, I just found so offensive. Come in late, so missing context to the end of this era, but thanks to all, this has been neat. Well, anyway, Forrest Gump sucks. <laughs> you you hate <laughs> Forrest Gump. You did bring it up last week. It was you. It was you. <laughs> I think he brings up, he super chats about it again later, I think. Yesterday I wore a shirt with Yoda dressed as a leprechaun as an undershirt, and nobody asked about Star st patty's day so no one got the greatness oh oh that sucks you know yoda slapped yadel with that green meat <laughs> all right what other explanation is there for grogu existing uh palpatine created it to uh, like go force life in the force he's actually darth maul yeah no other explanation just that darth maul and palpatine's baby yeah it's some uh... savage oppressed grogu you Ooh. fuckers. I appreciate it. He was a 25 pounder. My PB is 31. I'm trying to catch the Ohio State record flathead. I have tips and tricks on my channel for fishing. Nice. Check out the flathead cat, cat fisherman. fisherman. Hell yeah. Mauler, thoughts on potentially bringing back Mace just to fight Vader with no substance? Well, if there's no substance, then I hate it. <laughs> like, pretty much. I don't want to see, like, a thing done for no other reason than just isn't it neat to have that guy there and that guy there like i i don't know why anyone wouldn't take the opportunity if you're going to do something like that not to have them you know clash ideologically or about the 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 results of all of their actions their histories you. Yeah, and Vader like blame Mace Windu for not listening to him like like there's so know, much to talk lot... about yeah exactly there always is. So yeah, no, I'm I'm not a fan. If he just showed up and said, "I'm gonna defeat you," and then Vader's like, like "No, you won't," and then he, they fight. He just That's shows it. up. He's like, "It's time for me to whip your motherfucking ass." Like, Mother and then it's just a fight. It'd be like, "Well, okay." Yoda got no time for riddles when laying the pipe. Yeah, pretty much. Haven't even added the Stargrift lore to the EFAP wiki, and Stargrift ends. Best wishes going forwards. Thank you. Theory hates my name, refuses to read it. My wife called it, said Mahler has been missing lately. Can't wait to see the recaps be a lot better. Yeah. Mahler's been missing lately. I was, I was here for the last few. I didn't miss any, right? Stop George this. Hard R. Martin. No. I'll say your name. This sucks, but I understand. This was honestly becoming my favorite podcast. Hope you lads keep collaborating. Love you all. Mahler, you gay. Yeah. Hell yeah. You can blame the guys for ruining it, all right? It is our fault. Blame the thumbnail guy. He clearly ruined it. Get oh, and what a crazy stream that would be. Thanks, Rossi. Thoughts on the road to El Dorado? Uh, that's good shit. I haven't seen it in a while, though. Yeah, it's not like a 20-year-old animated movie. can't remember it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's just been a while since I've seen it. How does Korn's dual phase lightsaber properly work? When I was reading it, I thought he was like shifting gears on a bike for the same. Yeah, so um, Cornhorn has a dual phase lightsaber, which basically means there's two focusing crystals in it. And one of the crystals has a uh, basically different properties, which instead of the lightsaber being traditional length, actually makes it kind of like skinnier, but like have almost twice as much length, um, which is kind of interesting. And it it is almost like shifting gears. The, the entire module shifts. And when you shift, it brings one crystal out of focus and puts the second one in focus. And uh, which is like in the middle of a battle, he could adjust it and lengthen his fucking saber to like three meters. Pretty dope. Kill the Yuzong Vong. 
uh, in the first his first interaction with him. Need my Bombad Jedi review, then you can stop. Are there any other franchises or IPs each of you are big fans of that you haven't explored in each of the content yet? No, I pretty much have a, a channel for everything that I really love. So I can talk about whatever I want. Dragon Ball, Cobra Kai, um, got a Marvel and DC channel, which is run by Nick, called Fantasy Theory. Mm. It's like 50-50 for me. I've covered a lot of what I like, but there's still plenty of things that I think some people have no idea I'm even interested in. It's just sort of, it comes up when it comes up. I mean, I like cars. I don't have car channel, yeah. but it's not really a I franchise, I guess. I was going to say, like, the movies are like actual physical cars. <laughs> I don't like cars. <laughs> like... Real big fan of uh, Owen Wilson and his work on cars. Never see it. ka -chow. Ka -chow. Ryan, thoughts on Sith synthetic lightsaber crystals versus the new bleeding of crystals from killed Jedi? Seems the Sith killing Jedi would not have gone unnoticed. Yeah, like I said, I... I... I don't like the introduction of the whole like bleeding lightsaber crystals and, and all of that shit. And then it just brings in the idea of like attuning them to yourself. And if Ahsoka is able to like do something and purify one, what does that mean? Does that mean that anyone that could in the moment almost like adjust their personality and it have an effect on their lightsaber? I, I, I don't know. Um, also, if Ahsoka could do it that quickly, why does it take so long for Sith to to bleed theirs the way that they do? I, I don't fucking know. I think both have their interesting aspects. I just don't think... Uh... I, I think bleeding introduces a lot of complications to yeah. kind of all, all the way we thought about it before. Yeah, and... I kind of like the fact that you know, in the previous in the Legends way, they just take a crystal that's synthetic. They have to find... They can't get a real crystal so they get a synthetic one and then they just like do their work on it. I, I like that better because it makes it more unique to just Sith. Yeah. I just finished the Thrawn trilogy. What do I read now? Um, I mean, if I were you, I would get into Jedi Academy trilogy if you liked it. So I can't see someone like Dooku becoming that angry to turn to Saber Red. Uh. Hmm. Yeah. I couldn't either. And I also feel like with all the emotions that Anakin is feeling, like during his turn, during the uh during Order 66, the attack on the temple, the idea that um he would wait until like that comic, I guess, to kind of like let all that out. I I don't know. I don't buy it. Yeah. A Star Grift, what do you guys think about that one comic about Jar Jar's father? Do you regard it as canon or not? I'll miss Ryan most of all. Jar Jar's name? father? I don't... Bing Bing? Is it like Jojo or something? It's Bing Bing Binks. <laughs> I, like I, don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I ever recall that. I don't know about Jar Jar's dad. I, I thought he had dad abandoned him. The theory I sent you a message on Twitter. I don't check Twitter messages or DMs, man. The only way to contact me is during these live streams. Rest in peace, Stargriff, the most podcast of all time. It was the truly. Most. I'm going to miss the grift, but some of my favorite things are the ones I experience seldomly, like a favorite Xmas dish. Looking forward to seeing you three together when it's time to review things. That's the right attitude right there. Mm -hmm. I made an AI of Yoda. This is for you, Ryan. <laughs> Look at his fucking ass. God <laughs> damn, bro. What the... <laughs> Savant Syndrome Super Chat was regarding Force Gump last week asked about him being a Mary Sue oh I remember yeah yeah that's Chad of Maine Mahler might have Savant Syndrome as well not completely sure though never seen him playing ping pong mm. maybe one day please watch the Star Wars Chili commercials I think we've all seen it Voldy yeah, like that, that guy was like that person was like super chatting desperately the other day we couldn't <laughs> figure out what the fuck he was talking about and then the next day, like all those chili commercials were viral everywhere. Yeah, weird, hey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We should have we should have tried a little harder. Yeah, I guess. Wait, what was that last one? Voldy has yeah. And that's cursed child mm. is disgusting bullshit, uh, and stupid, and retarded. Cursed child isn't real. Will every Stargrift episode from here on out be a one year anniversary special? 
Um, I don't know about well, a year. It, it'll just depend on when stuff is out, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thoughts on Gears of War or God of War? Both would be cool. Be worried about both, depending on who's making them. Amazon. Yeah, see? <laughs> God, of, God of War is Amazon, I'm pretty sure. Thoughts on Bad Batch episodes 6 and 7? You don't have to watch my breakdown. I liked it. I thought it was... Um, I, I I don't know. I thought it was kind of more of the same. Uh, I do think that it was... It was cool to see Rex and see that Reeks. little interaction with Wolf. Well, like What I kind of stated, what I thought Bad Batch should be was more of that than what it is. I, I think what Bad Batch... In principle, if you're going to do a movie focused on the clones in this time era throw all this stupid bullshit about Operation Necromancer and M-Count and how Omega is the key to everything. Throw that shit all out the window and literally just make it about clones, ab- about Rex and the Bad Batch or whoever you want in this little uh, the sleeper cell of the clones kind of that are trying to go rescue other clones and dealing with the fallout and of Empire trying to phase them out or betraying them or the way that they're being treated and shit like that. Um, so I, I did appreciate a little bit of that that was in this these couple episodes um, in terms of some of their thought processes and logic. And again, Rex being like, well, Omega has crosshair, everything. There's nothing more to figure out. It's like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? You retarded motherfucker. Like, I'm so tired of them. Like acknowledging what we're all. Yeah. Yes. Guess what? You haven't laid it out to us enough that Omega's fucking amazing at everything she does. So please let every single character in turn, tell us how amazing she is. Going back to what Darth Melvin said, there are people who are Disney Star Wars fans and pure OT fans like Red Letter Media that said that Force Awakens is better than Return of the Jedi because Han is better in Force Awakens. Mm. That's a very f- interesting opinion. I don't even think they would say that these days. Red Letter Media, have, like, I watch a lot of their stuff. I don't know the last time they've even complimented TFA in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. I think Mike was very into hating the prequels. They pissed him off to no end. And he saw TFA as a director and writer team who agreed with him. And so he was like, even the ones that he suggested take over Star Wars. He apologized for that. (laughs) It's so funny. Yeah, yeah, that was a huge fuck up. Yeah, in his, uh, in his like, was a Phantom Menace review. I don't know which one it was, but he was like, they should really have gone to, uh, really like, go get a guy like J.J. Abrams to direct something like this. Look what he did Mm -hmm. with Star Trek. Dude, it's so like um, all those things came back to bite him in the ass. I think the opening of the Rise of Skywalker video, he says, I want to be clear, this is not my not fault. My fault. Yeah. And then the other two are like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? He's like, it's not my fault. I, I, I love happen. Red Letter Media. I don't, I don't always agree with either of them or both of them or all three of them, whoever's doing it, but I, yeah. I really enjoy watching this shit. Yeah, same. Inside of Ryan, there are two wolves. Inside of Salacious Crumb, there is Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> once <laughs> right. one time how's your eye do you still need surgery I might need a laser I pro- most probably will because it's not going away so it's like uh, impaired what would you do if they make Yoda pregnant with Grogu because their species works different <laughs> <sighs> that would be right. funny Jesus so I think huts are that way right huts have uh, huts have cycles where they basically like change their gender throughout their very long lifetimes. Um, I, I remember that happening at one point. I don't know if they've maintained that through like canon or not, but um, yeah, I don't. They shouldn't do that for Yoda. No. no. Uh, maybe Dooku killed Palpatine's former apprentice. Um. Ryan sort of looks like if Ryan Johnson used a twink. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Vice. Thanks, Vice Roy Joe. Thanks, dude. That's <laughs> nice. Nice fan P.O. Box letter. RK, show your fridge letter. Oh, yeah. So I opened a P.O. Box for you guys, by the way. If you guys so wish. Nice. It's on my Instagram. Go check it out. He's talking about the kind of stuff I get to my P.O. Box, which is mostly just uh, hate mail. I have one hanging on my fridge. That's what he <laughs> wants me to go get. I'll go get it. Really? Yeah, might as well. Oh. Be right back. Shit. I need another drink anyway. All right. Fair enough.
Fuck that guy. <laughs> Take a trip to see Mahler and stream. Could be fun. Could be, yeah. Probably be in Albion. Europe sometime this year. Ryan, do you know about the Great Heap and the Abominers? We did it again. The second he leaves, you got a specific Literally, it's like, it's like, dude, whenever he leaves, it's just a question about him. For him. What do you got planned for today? Uh, I'm going straight back to editing as soon as we're done here. How's the video? The Well, the one I'm working on is, just, is an EFAP movies for King Arthur, so it's it's real fun, but it's work that I'm behind on, so it's mm. all very... can be stressful, but in a good way. All right, so here it is. This is the letter. It was sent with no return address. It was from St. Louis on June 1st, 2023. It's the envelope. Here's the letter. And I keep this on my fridge for uh, some motivation. Here you go. I'll read the entire thing for you here, but you can kind of get Fuck a gist. You, you can kind of get a gist. Uh, <laughs> Dear Ryan, very nice. Fuck you, you retarded bigot. You're a fucking sick person. Who gives a fuck about you and who give a fuck about who is gay or not? You are just a fucking idiot. So stop talking out of your ass with hatred and right-wing politics, which for a fact isn't even the majority of America. Most of America is center to center left. Sincerely, from a fed up with your bullshit American. Um, Why did they send that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> who gives a fuck what I say, but send me this. I don't know. This is not the only, this is just the most, uh, the one that stood out to me the most. So I yeah, keep that on the fridge. Yeah, that's great. Why, why would you keep it on the fridge? Just to remind myself. Ryan. I don't know. All right. It didn't have an address in the top left, did it? No, no. That's why I said there was no return address. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I would have maybe sent something back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you know uh, about Great Heap and the Abominers? I'm not familiar with that. Who would win in a fight, Theory and Mahler? Uh, Mahler theory. Really tall. Mahler has tentacles. <laughs> very tentacle. I'm one of the Maya. I come back if you kill me. So right. <laughs> I feel like he would just logically explain why like, this is stupid, and I'd be like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> In all honesty, I appreciate you boys. Gonna miss, miss appreciate, appreciate you boys. Here's one more Yoda AI for the road. All right. <laughs> no paw. <laughs> I'll do it. Hmm. <laughs> for some reason, I'll ask Ryan if he's ever seen American History X. Jokes, jokes aside, the stream was here for a good time, not a long time. Nothing gold can stay. Y'all are awesome. Uh, yeah, I've seen American History X. Yeah, I feel like it's breaking up just as we're starting to really get established. We're hitting some good numbers, big numbers. Like the Beatles. If you guys raise a million dollars, I'm sure they'll stay. It's a possibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, heck, I'll stay. <laughs> it's a magical society of meats. What? Ooh. What? I don't know. I don't know what that means. Baller is tall Peter Griffin. <laughs> How tall is Peter Griffin? I don't know. I don't know. Never thought okay. about that. Hmm. Look at it, Theory. Ryan thoughts. Fuck. Was that AI Yoda? Thanks, Hot Legs. <laughs> God damn it. I guess it's sexual. Keep the Griff going. Is that like 800 bucks? What is what? Boy, 800 bucks. Right. Say what? Look up Abomination there. Star Wars Ridiculous. Abominers. Ryan, the hater was a bit off. America is center right, not center left. Yeah, the hater was a bit off. I agree. The, like Modern. the effort to go and like send me something like that is kind of crazy. Hmm. Like not just a DM, like an actual fucking like put a stamp on something and send me a letter in the mail. I did notice it. 
favorite story? I loved oh, Missionary's man. Mode. I didn't play separate ways. I was waiting to get convinced to play it. I'll probably play it if I like do another run through of the remake, but as it stands, I wasn't drawn to come back. I got some other stuff I gotta do, so I just sort of it just sort of slipped by. Um it happens. Favorite story was comic run. Um Vader in the Ghost Prison. I always go back to Legacy. I think it was so unique and cool, and I really got drawn into Legacy. Legacy. Jabba had the letter to Ryan sent, and he found out he preferred Salacious Be Gump. Be Gump? Uh, first of all, I preferred Jabba. I said I would marry Jabba for his money. Um, all you fucks conveniently forget that. Last thing I'll say, do better, Mauler. Oh, he's the one that, because we didn't, unless you didn't read it out, because I was just, uh, now I have the power to see all the super chats. And he, he said, uh, your job is literally sitting down and watching movies, and you can't even do that. Hope you never get a real job. It's just funny, because the amount of editing I do that's just not publicly available, so it's just it's just not something people recognize. Like, a lot of what theory does is going to just be things people don't know about. Same for Ryan, to, to a lot of extents. It's just awkward. It's 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 really hard to explain how difficult a lot of the things we have to do behind the scenes are to make everything work up front without mm -hmm. sounding vain. Like mm -hmm. you try to, you don't want, you don't want to be we're, like, we're, oh, we're I don't work. A, we're not pulling a Hassan right and talking about how you know so streaming is so it's difficult, so hard. But, but it's like not every, not the entirety of what we do is just here um, on no, this one stream or just on our one channels or whatever. I can't provide no. like insight if I don't have familiarity with the content and to do that i obviously got to rewatch stuff but i've also got to watch new stuff i got to catch up with old stuff and then i've just got obligations right like gary's been trying to set up breakdown streams for buffy for like years with me and i'm just like i don't know where the fuck i'm gonna fit those in i just don't uh but we're, we're trying to figure something out how's the dragons about to come so you're right, supposed to do a stream per episode for those which is you know something that was promised as part of doing them last year exactly uh acolytes on the way we want to do episode by episode coverage of that and that we already don't have time <clears throat> time we got okay so many of the fans want like full arc breakdowns of all the transformers movies or all the harry potter movies and stuff and it's like yeah we'd love to do all these things but i simply do not have the time um it's, you know it's stacked up um but you know I'm, I'm doing my best and obviously i would like to get more mainline videos out as well and any of us who do this you know for a living here on youtube we've, we've heard it a million times oh you can't hammer, handle a real job or like whatever it's like i can't speak for these guys i have no idea what what they were doing for me uh before i was doing youtube i spent 11 years in the military um, learning how to operate nuclear reactors, then operating nuclear reactors, and then training other people how to operate nuclear reactors. So I, I guess I don't know what qualifies a real job to some people or not, but um, well, funny. I know Mahler works really this hard. This shit is so. more difficult than any real job I've ever had in my life. So I've done supermarket for a year, a DIY store for two years, toy store for a year, and call center for tech support for a year. I did like... I've done a lot of the jobs that are considered soul destroying <laughs> to an extent, and they were soul destroying. I've talked about that a couple of times. Uh, this job I consider a dream job, but at the same time, it can it can be difficult. Uh, and a lot of it's to yeah. do with really meeting your fans' expectations and you know your responsibilities <laughs> to other people. Yes, like, yeah, I don't like letting down other creators who rely on me for you know. The, the, if people invite me for something, and I'm just like. Fuck you! I don't give a shit. <laughs> they feel like, like oh, I'm letting them down, you know, and I don't want to do that. Nor do I want to let down the people who are waiting for stuff from me. Well said. Yeah. Tiberius for two bucks says hello. Does hello. he? Hello. Hello. Good versus Dumbledore. It's a good one. Mahler, what crosses the line for you in Star Wars fantasy? Crosses the line. Like morally or just continuity? No idea. In Star Wars fantasy, what don't you understand about the question? I don't know. <laughs> um, what crosses the line for Jar Jar? That was the fucking line crossed, okay? And you might be thinking it's the introduction of Jar Jar. No, it was letting him go. It was not seeing more of him. I think they crossed the line when they decided that Jar Jar was embarrassing as opposed to kind of what needed to Star Wars needed to be about. He was the glue that held the prequels together was some people didn't even know he was in revenge of the sith when he held that movie together 
funeral scene, he was right there. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Zach. Just joined the stream. Why is Stargrift ending? I'm going to miss the streams. Thanks for the laughs, gentlemen. Oh, thanks for being part of it, man. Ryan, no stream yesterday? No, no stream yesterday. I, I just had some stuff. I uh, had some stuff come up. I'm busy. So. All right. Well, uh, that's it, boys. That's it for tonight's episode. It's uh, three and a half hours long. We got one final episode next week where we'll talk about the prequels and probably the trailer for the Acolyte. And then um, that's it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we bid you adieu. And we'll see you guys next week for the last one. Love Someone you was asking if um, I like King Kong from Peter Jackson. You'll find out one day when there's less going on. Don't you worry about it. That'll get coverage as well. Wow. There you go. Big old spooky secret. I like King Kong with Brie Larson. Yeah. Good for you. I do. <laughs> That's cute. I'm not trying to get you in trouble. I, Bree, we're, me and Bree are cool. She liked my tweet. They okay. talk a lot. Yeah, yeah. You guys hanging out? Mm hmm. Nice, dude. She broke up with her fiance like a year ago or whatever. So she's like, around. I just, I love Ryan. She started watching RK Outpost videos and she really turned her life around. So she's what like, can you I know say? what? Ryan is like that guy. It's like, it's like that person who is like, Stargriff saved my life. Yeah. You're, Right before we ended it. For Brie. Yeah, okay, got it. Cool. Pretty much. That's awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Well, uh, Ryan's got to go hang out with Brie. Mahler has to go edit. And I've got to go answer some stuff for Theory Savers. Love you guys. We'll see you later. Yeah. Bye bye. Well, Mahler, Mahler employs like five editors. I've got about five, maybe six people working to work on E5 stuff. Uh, Fringy is full time, Wolf is full time. Uh, I've got Gogur is full time, Meme Repository is full time. As far as I'm aware, full time in terms of they are working as much as they can. Um, you know, obviously they can't work as it as like a full time job. They've got part time jobs as well, as far as I'm aware. But uh, I do, you know, they they're doing what they can. I'm doing what I can. Like it's it's not as easy, and especially there's the whole like you can't just throw an editor on. You have to teach them everything that comes with the style of of what we make. Uh, it's Trust me, I've been working over the years to find uh, faster ways. And what you'll notice is the output on Moolah is is faster and bigger than it ever has been. So, like, it has had an effect. And a balance will be reached, Thanos style. The balance. Light meets darkness. Sad, I like the stream. Me too. Love you guys. See you next week. See you. Boy. And you're sounding like a separatist.